is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 106.7 FM and iTalk1067.com. Also brought to you in part by Northland Pioneer College, Ace Hardware of the White Mountains, Beamer's Glass, Beeler Orthodontics, Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint, Comfort Fit Ventures, Summit Regional Medical Center, Horn Auto Center, and Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports. And now, Sholo Ford presents High School Football on iTalk 106.7 and worldwide on iTalk1067.com. Very good evening, and thank you for joining us here at Eastmark High School, where the Snowflake Lobos bring their 5-2 and two record down to play the 5-2 and two Firebirds and what a game that is largely considered going to be the one that determines who is going to win this region. As I'm Derek Palmer alongside Mike Granillo. As we jump right into the Ace Hardware keys to the game, Ace Hardware has a 24-7 locksmith. The next time you're locked out of your car or just need a key replaced any hour of the day, any night of the week, call Ace Hardware and Pine Top Overguard and Sholo. Mike, watch the Lobos last week run Rough shot over Marco Siniza, and then you come into this one where they can still boast that ground attack, but playing against an Eastmark team that seems like it has quite a lot of success through the year, but also have a running back that the Lobos got to keep their eye on with Coleman Samples. But what do you think the big key is coming in? I, I mean, ultimately, it's it's the mental game because this should have the atmosphere of a playoff game, uh, especially for the Snowflake Lobos, and so they got to be they got to cover all phases of the game, the run, the pass, defensively, the line of scrimmage, special teams. they got to come. Everybody's got to come ready to play. Uh, big moment for them playing a team that won the 3A championship last year. It's got the Lobos playing up at the 4A level, Eastmark playing at the 4A level where they have about 500, maybe 600 more students enrolled than do the Lobos. But you're looking at these sidelines, these teams look like they are evenly matched both in numbers and in size. Snowflake, when it is really humming, is able to dominate the trenches do you think that that's something and, that they're going to be able to pull And exactly, that's exactly what's got to happen. I mean, I think when Sholo is, I'm sorry, Snowflake is really playing its best, it's when it's running the ball effectively. Uh, they can mix in the pass uh, very very well as well. They have good athletes on the perimeter, but the but their bread and butter is the run, and so it's going to be down to those big guys up front. We saw them last week defensively on the line of scrimmage have to go sometimes four defensive linemen because the three defensive linemen weren't getting it done against the run of Marco Steniza. So we'll see how much, how dominant, not, not dominant, but how heavy uh, Eastmark decides to run the ball. If they run the ball a lot, look for Snowflake to bring in an extra defensive lineman. All right, those are your Ace Hardware keys to the game. Ace Hardware has a 24-7 locksmith. The next time you're locked out of your car or just need a key replaced in the hour of the day or night, any night of the week, call Ace Hardware and Pine Top, Overguard, and Sholo. Eastmark won the toss and has elected to receive. Huh. We've seen that uh, two weeks in a row. Most, most teams defer, but te some teams want to get their offense out on the field right away. And I, I personally, I've always li liked to be on defense first because, you know, the adrenaline is the highest at the beginning of the game, and defense is a great time to let that out. Got the Firebirds who are wearing smoke gray, top and bottom, white hats. Lobo's wearing white, top and bottom, blue hats. As they're going to come out and kick it off here on a balmy, well, probably dipped under 90 degrees at this point in the evening. Maybe. So it's a, a little warmish. But the pink, uh, pink numbers are it's, it's something special. I think it's supposed to be copper. It's supposed to be. Oh, is that right? That's yeah. their normal uniform? You don't think that's for breast cancer? No, awareness? no. But they got some, some pink sleeves. As uh, Back to receive is Lunt. Blake going to take this one at the center of the field, looking for some blocking help as he scoots to the near side, is able to get to the 25 before he's eventually upended. So pretty good return there for the Firebirds, who are going to come out with Mason Jensen as the quarterback, completing 71% of his passes, 145 yards per game. He's really able to spread it around. Where he's got uh, Maximo Cano, who is averaging 48 yards a game, Jackson Bailey, 55, and Kyson Lunt, who is just in on that oh, yeah. return, who's averaging 53. So the Lobo's got a few different pass catchers that they got to keep their eye on but Coleman Samples also had the backfield 96 yards per game as he's going to come out to start in the pistol averaging more than five yards a carry receivers on either side as the Lobos 
Got four down and have a little bit of pressure waiting. Instead, there's a fake handoff. Starts rolling to the right, looking upfield where he gets this one up and underneath. Bomb there on the defense, but it's deflected. Nearly with a chance to pick that one off, but it just hung up a little bit on both the defender and the receiver. Well, my first question here tonight is going to be, how does the athleticism of these two teams match up in the skill position uh, situation? Because you know we know what Snowflake has. Uh, they have good speed. Not necessarily the best size over there, although we just saw one of their bigger players, Bomb, go up and deflect that. But interesting to see what Eastmark has on the athleticism side. And so far, not, not a great pass, but Snowflake will take it. I think that uh, Jensen might be playing a little banged up as Eastmark does have a little bit of injury concern that it is working with. Is Now he's going to have samples on his right, looking in that direction, winds up and throws this one too high. Trying to get Lunt, pass sales and is incomplete. You know, sometimes as an offensive coordinator, whoever's calling the plays, you might – Usually you start off with the run just to kind of get some rhythm going, let your linemen get the idea of, of, of attacking people instead of having to go immediately into pass protection, and I think that might be hurting Eastmark right now. Taking a look at Snowflake's back where you got McCray playing the safety position and Aiden Coor also back in his middle linebacker spot. As there the handoff goes, Samples, he runs to the right side, puts his head down, and is brought down by Delur uh, Lerma. So just a, a interesting play calling. Two passes and then a run play. And the run play wasn't bad, but you're, you have 10 yards to gain, and they, they were nowhere near. So Snowflake wins the first battle of the game. I, I And I credit the coaching staff of Snowflake, a totally different defensive set than what we saw against Marcos Denise last, last week. This, they're going to uh, uh, cover two with two deep backs, as you mentioned, Derek. And so they're definitely ready for the scouting report on this one. Brimhall standing around his 35 as Gessner is in to punt it away for the Firebirds, who at this point kept three and out, but they got everything spread out wide as there's a good snap, and it will kick it away. It's low. Brimhall is going to wait for the fair catch and has that one at the 37. So good field position to start here after forcing the three and out to the Lobos. Going to come out with Kenton Turley and Carter Rabin, who were chewing up yards in big bunches last week against Marcos. Turley had a little bit of a hard time hanging onto the football at the start, but he really recovered and had a huge day with about 150 yards. And I would expect Snowflake to come out on the ground here for their first play. Going to come to the near side here with Papa and Baum lined up. Brennan Bryant, who's completing almost 60% of his passes, got split backs with Turley. Instead, they're going to throw this one out. Papa catches this one over the 40. That gets to the near sideline, forced out of bounds as he crosses over the 45, gains seven. Close to a first down, but instead they go play action and go with a quick pass to Papa. Who did, and Baum, credit Baum, did a great job of running the defense off and leaving that lane very open for Papa. 10.41 to go in the first quarter. Just three plays here for Eastmark. Now second down and four. Now they might look to throw it down the field. Got receivers on either side. Bomb on the right. Instead, give this one to Rabin, who tries to accelerate up the middle, but he is brought down right around the line of scrimmage. No, he's able to get his inertia going and pick up maybe two. It's third and short. That was a tough play for Rabin. He kind of just ran into the back of a defender, and his momentum got stopped so quickly that he went down, but the, the, nobody really tackled him. But the defender happened to be right in the hole, just facing the wrong direction. Scoreboard showing third and three. That's a very, very short three. I, I got to call that two. <laughs> Closer it's to clearly two. two. We have a, a very intimate look Yes. here uh, sitting amidst the Snowflake faithful, pretty close to the Snowflake sideline, as now facing third down. We're going to call it two again with the split backs. And the ball rolls oh. to Rabin, who's fortunate to scoop that one up, but he's going to be tackled in the midst of it all, wind up losing a yard, and the snap there is going to foil the Lobo effort to try to convert third and short. Menard on the tackle for the Firebirds, but uh, I guess the silver lining here for Snowflake is they were able to get something going, but miscues. You cannot have miscues, especially in a situation where you're kind of a little bit playing for your playoff life, but hopefully they can get some field position as they switch the field on Eastmark. Bryant's in to punt, and there was lots of time on the play clock, but somebody take a timeout. I think Eastmark had to. They were having major substitution problems. 
Timeout East, Mark, with 9.19 to go in the initial. No score. It's the Show Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at sholoford.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. After Eastmark calls timeout, Brown comes out to punt for the Lobos, and he has it kind of come off the side of his foot. It will be Eastmark football at the 36. Yeah, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of flipping the field and pinning Eastmark deep. So that did not work out in Snowflake's favor. So here come the Firebirds now with Jensen, who had attempted to pass on his first two plays and wasn't able to convert right now move samples who has five yards on his only carry off to his left gives it to him as he starts running to the right side looking for some blocking help as he runs along the 35 and eventually turns it up and manages to fight his way out for a couple of yards bomb there with the stop well it looked like that play had the makings of a successful run play because they as you mentioned Derek, great blocking out in front but the snowflake defenders able to get underneath that blocking cut off the cutback lanes and make the tackle. Second down and nine. Just one yard there for Samples. Lobos is historically very quick. Running laterally might not be the way to go. Is there they fake the give. This time we're able to complete that one on the far sideline. As it's gathered in by Lunt. Going to be shy of the first down. But a little better play calling for Eastmark here in the early going of this second possession as they're mix mixing up the run and the pass. Now we'll see if uh, Snowflake decides to crowd the box here on this third and short play. Third and one. Colin Minar coming out wide left. You got two men out wide on the right side, and the Lobos come into the neutral zone. Well, that's the easy way to get five yards. And we saw Snowflake do that to Marcos Deniza High School last week, but not able to stay disciplined on that first big third down. So a comfort fit Dencher first down, first of the ball game, 8.29 to go. No score. Eastmark with its second possession now pushes it into Snowflake territory after they got the good field position off of the short punt. Working from the shotgun samples on the right, handed off to him as he accelerates to that right side, Ooh. gets through the first level. Now he slips a tackle at the 40, still on his feet at the 30, 20, and along the far sideline, eventually pushed out of bounds. Another comfort fit Dentures first down as they move it all the way to the 20. It's a gain of 29. And that was Lunt. We saw Lunt on the kick return, his first touch of the night. Very shifty runner, hard to bring down, and uh, perhaps a little eye-opener for the Snowflake Global defense. They got to have to wrap up a little bit better on him. It was, excuse me, it was Samples, not Lunt. Pistol formation is now in the backfield as Jared Hinton moves to the right side as Jensen's one of three for seven yards. Give it to Hinton as he tries to go up the middle and is eventually stopped first by White. Give him two yards on that one. Into the red zone go the Firebirds. No score with the clock approaching eight minutes to go. Got the big... Run there from samples that came after the Lobos were jumping into the neutral zone, which didn't necessarily extend the drive. It was third and one. Yeah. But kind of put them on their heels a little bit. Now trying to recover as they're facing now a second and eight again with Hinton in the backfield. One of the linebackers for Snowflake going to have to make a big play here. Hinton now moves again to Jensen's right side. Fake the handoff to him. No, they gave it to him as he again goes right up the gut and this time picks up a couple of yards, maybe only one. And a nice job there by that aforementioned middle of the defense. Well, and the, and the middle of the defense is doing a pretty good job when they run that straight ahead 
uh, pick a hole type situation. The Lobos defensive front, their four linemen, are doing a good job of standing up the blockers, the offensive linemen for Eastmark. But now you got to watch for a little counter to that play and watch the quarterback keeping that maybe the next time they run that. Samples back out there as he's standing. Oh, now they got hitting it there at, as the quarterback takes a snap, fakes the handoff. Now he's going to run right up the middle, gets it first down, spins around as he's met at the five. It's the only question is, is he in the end zone? Nope. No, he stopped at the one. Lerma gets there to deny the touchdown, but it's a comfort fit. Denture's first down will be a first and goal situation here after the Wildcat is able to uh, provide a little uh, unexpected misdirection. Continuing with it, Hinton still in there as the quarterback. And this time he's going to use samples as a lead blocker, go to the right side, and he's got it in the end zone, a Mountain Mobile Autoglass touchdown from one yard out. Well, the thing that's different of when Hinton goes in as the quarterback in that Wildcat is he has time to pick his hole. It's not a predetermined place that he's going to run to, and that's been a little bit more effective, obviously, for the Firebirds here in these last two plays. But Hinton is the key, it looks like, to their red zone offense for Eastmark. Cameron Kelly in to attempt the extra point as that drive went about 65 yards and used about a 29-yard run to get half of them as the extra point is up and good with 6.36 to go. 7 nothing. the Lobos trail. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. You've been there waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Snowflake trailing 7-0, 636 to go first quarter. Northland Pioneer College kickoff. When it's time to kick off your college education, do so at Northland Pioneer College. We'll pay the lowest tuition in the state. As back to receive this for the Lobos, standing on the near hash is Rabin. Far side is Papa. Kick angling toward Rabin, who has this one off the fingertips, takes it off a big hop at the five, now trying to recover as he comes along this near hash and gets to the 20 and then fights his way out to the 22. Well, so. that's a pretty good job by Rabin after giving up five yards in a couple seconds, but not a time for Snowflake to panic, and I don't I don't see the coaches doing that. You, you're not going to keep a – I mean, East March a good team. We know they're a good team. They're going to score. No problem. Now you just got to be focused. You got to – uh, be disciplined right here and come back and try to get your, yourself a drive and get some points on the board. But to that point, the start of the year at CDO, only lost that game by one score, 21-14. to 14. Other loss was to Northwest Christian, 37-35. Mm -hmm. So they're battle-tested, are the Firebirds. As now here come the Lobos. Quick toss coming out. Raven has that one, spinning around to get over the 30 and eventually falls forward to the 32, picks up 12. And has a comfort fit denture first down. Williams there with the stop. Well, great blocking on the outside over there by Papa. And uh, Raven, you know, he's had a couple, which you might call miscues, and I think he's a little more fired up uh, this last time he's got the ball, and it turned into positive yards. Trips coming to the right side as the ball spotted on the 32. Tidwell's in the middle of him as Bryant fakes the handoff, throws it in this direction again with Rabin as he's looking for some blocking help, runs away from one horse collar nearly, is just his explosion in speed was going to deny the personal foul, picks up another 12 and has a comfort fit dentures first down. And Rabin actually, you know, I think that low center of gravity helped him right there. I'm surprised they still didn't call a penalty. That uh, looked like the defender got his hand inside the jersey, but the Lobos will take it. They're rolling. Push it out to the 43, 540 to go in the initial, 7-0 East Mark leading, but the Lobos with a quick two 12-yard plays, both between Bryant and Rabin, who is now again split wide to the left. The only man on the near side is Baum, as they fake the handoff, looking toward Baum, throw this toward double coverage. Baum oh. nearly has that one underneath, and then has his legs taken out in the process. I don't think Baum thought he had a chance at it, but I think he may have if he would have, if he could have maybe laid out for that one. But that's a very tough, it's a, it's a timing throw, right? Um, Brian is throwing that ball before he knows if he's open or not. And they're hoping Baum can go oh. up and get it. Bryant dropped that in there yeah, pretty I well. It was a good I, pass. Would have been tough to make a better pass 
as that was a nicely thrown ball and just, just a little too long is now still with Turley, the little man in the backfield. He gets the call, goes up the middle, gets toward the 50. He's met by three defenders, picks up seven. It'll be third and short. Well, good time to run that play. As you see the hole, the hole open up on the replay, but you run three passes in a row, you get the defense softening up, spreading out a little bit, and then you run Turley uh, with his size and speed right up the middle. And now a third and manageable for Snowflake. Third down and three. Got two receivers on either side for the Lobos. Bryant, who's three of four for 31 yards, moves Turley to his right. Takes the snap, looking in this direction where Tidwell oh. had... Balu was there in the uh, coverage. Just a sophomore, too, but he's coming hard. And I think the receiver was uh, hearing a little bit of footsteps, Tidwell, that was, and that caused him to pull those arms in a little bit early. But now, Sholo, the Snowflake, excuse me, it definitely in a situation where they could run a fake right here at midfield. Got Rabin up, Bryant sitting as the punter, hitting his back, but it doesn't look as if Eastmark's really buying it. They got one guy back. Oh, and now a little bit of movement on the left side of the line, and that will probably – that should take care of that problem. False start called as the Lobos uh, got burned by getting into the neutral zone of third and one on the previous defensive series. Yeah. And that one uh, – Narrows the playbook. A lot, a lot more pressure tonight on Snowflake than Eastmark. Uh, a win is huge tonight for Snowflake. And a loss for Eastmark, yeah, probably not going to move things around a whole lot. So perhaps the nervousness getting to the Lobos just a little bit. Bryant still in there as the punter. As he has a good snap. And can away from hit and takes a huge Lobo bounce. Rolls inside oh, the 10. Is much. it going to stay in? It will die just inside the five. <laughs> and a great punt there to flip the field by Bryant. Did what he needed to do, and they do finally flip the field. We'll see if they can get a defensive stop this time and perhaps set themselves up for some good field position here in the first quarter. But Snowflake's got to find a way to get the run going. They've only run the ball once, and it had success. I, I take that back. They've run it they run with Turley once. Uh, Ravens had a couple runs as well, but they've got to establish the run a little bit more, I believe, mix it up a little bit more in order to keep some sustained drives. Aiden Core is out there, manning his linebacker spot. Had uh, suffered a pretty ugly knee injury, but he's recovered after about a month, and he's thinking uh, probably putting his ears back and see what he can do. Is they're going to put Jensen now into mm. the... End zone, but here come the Lobos into the neutral zone again. Mm. Well, I th yep, we got, got two officials in agreement. Yeah. Oh, wait. No, no, okay. Yeah. And, you know, smart on Eastmark, though. Get yourself out of the shadow of your goal poles. Give yourself a little room to operate. So that'll move it out to the 10. Still not uh, necessarily advantageous field position. Is coming in motion. And then stopping as an H-back to try to give Samples a little bit more help as he finds a little bit of space over the left side. Looks like he gained four. Bentley there with the stop. Be second down and one. The holes are there, though. Snowflake's got to do a little bit better job of filling in the gaps. Linebacker's got to come up. Uh, Greer in there as well. And did a, did a pretty good job, just a hair late. So here is... The fruits of that penalty from the Firebird perspective as they're facing a second and one after the four-yard gain on first. Give it again to Samples as he now moves into the middle and then bounces it back to the far side and is going to take a couple of men for a little bit of a ride all the way out past the 20. McCray eventually there with the stop, but a big run for a comfort fit denture first down with four minutes to go. And nothing too fancy for Eastmark on offense. They just are running some isolation plays. And Samples is just running in behind the designated lineman. And uh, they're able to push that pile and get positive yards. 53 yards now on five carries for Coleman Samples. As he is now on his quarterback's left, he gets the call. He starts running to the right. Eventually cuts it up near the hash, puts his head down, and is only able to gain, well, he winds up with five. So I don't know if this is a size issue, but Snowflake is not meeting the ball carrier at the line of scrimmage. They're five yards deep. The, the running backs for Eastmark are getting into the secondary way too easily. That front four has got to do a little bit better job of 
getting low and not allowing the lineman, offensive lineman to get downfield. Three yards on that one, second and seven. Another big in with Ramar Williams comes over to act as a lead blocker again, trying to get that one going from the left to the right. Coor there with his second stop, so making his presence felt after he comes back from the injury, but he's going to set up a third down and short. Well, and he did a great job of just pushing the, the lineman into the ball carrier because really he was in trouble, but he made something out of that uh, by, by pushing the lineman backwards. Third and two. Eastmark going with tempo, working with the pistol. Sample's still back there. Now moves to Jensen's right. He's one of three for seven yards, but Don't with jump. all the success on the ground, is there you can see a little bit of a flinch from the Lobo front, but they're able to stay back. Still lots of time on the play clock as Jensen changes the play at the line. Now asks for it, brings down a high snap, hands it off to Samples, mm -hmm. tries the right side, and he's got four yards and enough for a comfort fit denture first down. And it seems like Eastmark has had the majority of their success moving on to the I'm sorry, running the ball off the right side. They like the matchup over there. Um, but I would like to, again, see the Snowflake defenders on the line. They're, they're standing up a little bit, allowing the offensive lineman get into their chest and uh, getting driven backwards a little bit. Two minutes in the first quarter, 7-0 Eastmark with the lead. This drive started on their five. They've been able to push it out to the 35. As now Samples moves over to Jensen's left. No, that's Hinton who's out there. Is he... Going to provide a little blocking help. Jensen drops this one off over the top, but well overthrown and incomplete, looking for Lunt. Well, that was an attempt at a, at a pass fake, but the fake was uh, not very believable. And so they, they had really nothing going there. Good coverage over there by Baum. Um, I think this game, though, defensively for Snowflake is really going to come down to that front four. And I don't know if they have some subs they can put in there. Uh, just to kind of keep fresh bodies. I, I don't think that Eastmark has subbed since this drive started. No. Well, they, they did sub one uh, tight end. Okay. Yeah. So hitting right now on the right. He's going to get the call. Moving to the left side. Is able to get around the edge. Greer eventually pulls him down, but it's a nine-yard gain, and he's very close to the yard marker. And you're right. It was an A-back that came in, Ramar Williams, and he's a big boy, six foot four, 250 pounds, and he is securing that edge, and that's right where... Eastmark is running the ball. He's right behind him. Basically another blocker in there. I don't think they're going to give him the ball, but he's in there just to double team and then chip under the linebackers, and they're doing it with great success. As we now see him lined up on the right side, I would expect that ball to go over there. Hinton with 30 yards on five carries. Samples with 65 yards on eight carries. Hinton now moves over to Jensen's left, and he will get the call running to the right side. He's able to get into the second level as he goes over the 50. Brent White brings him down, but not before he gets a seven-yard gain. And this is the hard thing for high school players. As you see, you know, linemen down the field, you, you can't – You're trying. they're trying too hard to make the play instead of doing their job perhaps. You know, I, I'm not sure what the scheme is for on the defensive side, but they need to just fill gaps and allow linebackers to come in and make the plays. Under a minute to go in the first, 7 nothing. Eastmark leading – and has pushed it into Snowflake territory for the second time in as many possessions. Hinton still in the backfield as he's now with 37 yards on six carries, but has this one thrown and caught, but right as soon as he wraps his hands around it, Coor is able to bring down Cano, but it's going to be enough for a first, a comfort fit denture first down. Yeah, that's just a great catch by Cano. Cano, I'm not sure the pronunciation, but just a great catch. This, this quarterback for Eastmark has not been the most accurate. If they can get Eastmark into some passing situations, Snowflake might be a, have a little more success. So they're going to have to sell out against the run. Put it on the 45 of Snowflake. Two seconds left, and they're going to get one play off as this one handed to Hinton. It met at the line, but is able to force his way forward for a two-yard gain as the buzzer sounds. First quarter's in the books. Eastmark in the midst of another long drive. 7-0, the Firebirds have the lead. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy, Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford, on the east end of the deuce, and at SholoFord.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise 
At Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. Oh, this guy is talking to you in the sink. Oh, yeah. 7-0 in the second quarter. Eastmark had this drive start at the five-yard line, but has pushed it down past the 45 of Snowflake. Facing second and seven. Sample's now going to take this one, starting from the left, heading to the right, and gets dumped around the 35 well, as he picks up another six. And I don't know if, if Eastmark is doing something different tonight, but if I'm a defense coordinator for Lobos, I'm finding number five, and wherever he lines up, that's where they're running the ball. Right he now, double he's teaming that in. off the edge in the down formation with Samples now moving over to Jensen's left. Third down and three. Handed off. He's running toward five. He's able to get again into that second level where he's eventually met by Brimhall, but not before he picks up 10 yards and a comfort fit dentures first down. And now they're bringing five out. They're going to give him a little rest. He kind of got blew, blown up a little bit on that. But he did the job because he allowed he, he took the guy to the outside that time and allowed Samples to run inside the tackle. So now we'll see if they run towards number seven. He's the uh, he's the six foot two, two hundred and twenty five pound a back. And he starts now off the right side, being told to go down. Yeah, they're going to do run a three it right point over there. stance. Samples moving over to Jensen's left again. Set on the 28, first and 10, coming right in that direction. He gets tripped up, but still able to keep his feet moving and pick up a couple of yards. That time the Lobos met him at the line, but he's a big dude. He is. He's a hard runner. And what ha what's happening is they're pulling the center. The center is the, the two guys, the, the tackle and the tight end, are double teaming the end, and they're just pulling the center and allowing the guard to kind of come free and say, catch us if you can, which so far Snowflake has not been able to do. Actually, a, a four-yard gain, 85 yards now for Samples as he move into the left again of Jensen. Fake the handoff. No, we got the Wildcat going as Hinton keeps that one. Winds up gaining but a yard, maybe two. It's going to be another one of these third and three or four situations. The Lobos defense trying to get stout, but you got to wonder if they're going to have to do it twice. Well, and Coach Dixon's probably saying, hey, you, you might be able to figure out what we're doing, but you got to stop us. And right now, when Hinton's in the backfield as the quarterback, he's probably going to keep the ball. He's out there again. Samples with him. Number five. Now his sample comes over to the right side. Hinton drops it off on the near sideline, but the Lobos read that and deny him the line of scrimmage. I think that pass winds up going for a loss. Well, and just as I said that, Coach Dixon goes away from what was working. That was such a slow pass. It took forever to get out there, and the Lobos using their speed to get out there and make that stop. So. Much needed because now at least you have a chance here. You were on the brink of giving up another seven, and now you have a chance to stop and turn this ball over, but you got to come up with something big and not jump. 9.20 left in the half. Fourth down and four. Watch the left side. Got Lunt split wide left, but Samples in the backfield. Fake the handoff. Now Lunt trying to run it over on the cross, and it's picked up. Intercepted, Papa trying to come back out along the goal line, winds up forcing his way to the 10, so that Lobos wind up giving up 11 yards, but they get that uh, the play that might supercharge the offense now. Well, I know I've been a critical of uh, Lo Snowflake Lobos pass, I mean, uh, play calls in the, in the past. That was not a smart idea. I mean, you just went 70, 80 yards running the ball, and now you decide you're gonna go with the pass. You only had four yards to gain. Uh, and, and Jensen has not been a very accurate passer so far in this game. And he didn't miss by much, but it was enough to allow the Lobos to come up with the pick. All right, here comes Snowflake after they allow an awful lot of real estate to be occupied. But don't give up any points is there. A handoff after a low snap eventually gets into Turley's paws. And he winds up being stopped by Bernard, but not before he gains six. Well, now it's time for the Lobos to start inflicting a little punishment on the East Mark line. And uh, Turley's a great way to do that. 185-pound back coming at you. Um, I think that, that Snowflake's got to soften up the defense with the run. Lobo's making an adjustment here in the first half, not going with the split backs. Instead, with Rabin split wide, 
Turley, the lone man who is on Bryant's left. Short drop as he's looking in the right. And has that one eventually deflected and picked off. Intercepted and going on toward the left. It's Lake who is going to run it. Blake into the end zone for the touchdown. A Mountain Mobile Auto Glass pick six. Well, and that ball just a hair high. I don't think Turley thought that Bryant was actually going to throw it to him. And as a matter of fact, it may have been intended for Papa, who was behind him. But either way, uh, 17 uh, Blake was going to get the, was going to get there. It was either too short for Tidwell or too I'm sorry, too short for Papa or too high for Tidwell. Uh, tough break for the Lobos. So now after. One interception provides Snowflake with a fresh breath of life. Cameron Kelly in to try to make it a 14-0 game. I believe that was uh, returned about 25 yards. Maybe As that yeah, one 20, is up. 25. And good. 14-0 with 8-14 to go. The Lobos down. This is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Short kick taken on the far side by Rabin as he's got a little bit of speed coming up to the 25, but a penalty, penalty. flag follows him. Usually in the area of a deep of a return team holding or blocking the back. But here's the good news for Sholo. Snowflake. Snowflake. Wow. It's a long drive, I guess. <laughs> um is that if they can if they can get down the field and put seven on the board, they're only down seven, and they get the ball yep. to start the second half. It's a good personal Eastmark. foul called against Eastmark. That helps. What? It's a chop block. A chop block on the covering team. That, uh, Interesting. That's one you don't see every day. Huh. But it's going to move the ball all the way out to the 43 for the Lobos. Yeah, 15 yards tacked onto that. So Firebirds called for an illegal block below the waist. Huh. I, I'm not sure why you're blocking. I, I when you're on wish defense, we had uh, eyes on that one. So here come the Lobos with great field position. Bryant, who is just intercepted, going to continue work with Turley, the lone man in the backfield, and he gets the call. Met at the line of scrimmage and then brought down. Got a little bit of help. Ramsey was there with the initial hit. No gain. <sighs> but that's okay. I mean, I, I, I'm i going to sound like a broken record, but don't abandon the run. That's that's one play that they've really been able to stop. Everything else has been at least three or four yards, and sometimes six or seven. Turley out there now with 13 on three. He's standing on Bryant's right, second and ten. As tried to start the option, kick that one out to the far side where there's great pursuit by the Firebirds. Still, Turley was able to turn the corner. Looks like he might, though, only have gained three. And so the problem now for Snowflake is now they're in, obviously, a passing situation. Um, the thing about running the ball is you start to inflict a little bit of punishment, and maybe your conditioning coming from the altitude might help out. But... Uh, I think Snowflake needs to just try not to get too fancy and just see if you can bully these guys. Do you see uh, along the front here for the Firebirds, you've got a lot of those A blockers that you've uh, highlighted, so they yeah, also they're, potentially they're. could be getting a little winded. Is there dropping back and a nearly another pickoff looking for Rabin, but instead it was deflected Man. and nearly taken in the other direction by uh, who was that? Oh, number 27. I'll tell you what, if we had a replay of that one, Eastmark knew exactly what was coming there. 
We saw the linebacker, as you mentioned, one of those A-backs on offense came sprinting down to this side of the field. They knew where that pass was going. Uh, and what I was going to say is by formation, Snowflake's doing a good job of spreading the defense out. Keep running the ball. You're going to end up with a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, and you're going to win some of those, and you're going to get positive yards. Bryant, who had a great punt on the last opportunity, sends this nice. one toward Hinton, who's carrying, calling for a fair catch, has this one at the 20. Had to catch that one over the shoulder. Didn't have a chance to say it over the last one, so we'll go ahead and tell you that Northland Pioneer College has the lowest tuition in the state. And uh, when it's time to kick off your education, you ought to think about that. And as here come the Lobos with 6.44 left in the half, needing to get a stop, trailing 14-0. Eastmark has scored on its last two possessions. Well, no, it's, that's not entirely correct. <laughs> Got stopped on the fourth down, but then the second play on the ensuing possession was the pick six. But a lot of that you could say was the result of the way that they were able to drive the ball from the five-yard line and into the red zone. Well, early on this drive, Snowflake has got to commit to stopping the run. Going with the pistol, and I think that is Hinton back there. So he moves over now to Jensen's left. From the 18, give to Hinton. He's surrounded in the backfield. Lerma gets there first. You know, it sure looks by formation. I, I think perhaps the cover two situation, uh, they're pre they prepared for the pass, and I think Eastmark is committed to the run. So you have four defensive linemen, and really you only have two linebackers because the third linebacker is out in coverage, and then you got the two safeties. Those, one of those two safeties, I think, has got to move up and help on run support. Two receivers out wide right as Jensen from the shotgun. Hands this one to Hinton, who's again trying to follow that bleed blocker, but Lerma is able to bottle him up, but not before Hinton winds up gaining five to make it third and short. Lerma, we've called his name a lot this year. He's not the biggest guy, but just does a great job of reading the play and getting in behind the block, getting around the ankles, because Hinton's a big boy and uh, making those tackles. Ramar Williams now setting up on the right side of the line. Hinton... Starts in the pistol, but now moves to Jensen's right. Watch the snap. Jensen starts moving off to the left. Looks like he's looking at the sideline. There's eight seconds on the play clock. Looks right. like he's confused. Five seconds on the play clock. Now sets it up in the shotgun. One second. And Eastmark sideline called timeout. 5.23 to go in the half. 14-0 the Firebirds lead. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus, all kinds of bait, including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers, and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. Yeah. 5.23 to go. Eastmark just used its second timeout to set up now what they're calling third and five. I, I thought that uh, Hinton had gained five yards on that last play, but may, maybe it was. Maybe, I think he gained about four. four. So, yeah, third and five. I thought it was going to be closer to third and three or two, but instead. So another big opportunity for Snowflake here. Put this on the Firebird 24. And Hinton still out there as the running back. Moves over to Jensen's right. Snowflake crowding the line a little bit. As now they fake the handoff to Hinton. Wind up and throw this one again. Trying to get that one over on the cut. Or the, excuse me, the, ah. the slant. Lunt had a hand on that one. Nearly cradled it. But again, a little inaccurate, right? I mean, it's close, but not quite there. And, as, and But East Mark just continues to go to the passing game. It's a huge opportunity here for Snowflake. Yeah, get, get the three and out. Yeah, lots of time left. Good field position. Still with three timeouts. Gessner's going to come in and punt. Brimhall standing on his 45-yard line. So they got a chance to, to get some points and then, as you mentioned, get the ball to start the second half. Not a lot of respect for the punter here. <laughs> a little bit of pressure coming from the far edge. He steps oh, into it and go. kicks it short and takes a huge bounce at the 50 and then rolls beyond the 35 and down to the 30. So 
The rugby style mm. punt, effective. Yeah, Brimhall really wanted to pick that one up, but he was wise to avoid. Uh, yeah, he is, at this point, you can't give up possession that deep in your own territory. So you, you could you could see he really wanted to, but good discipline on his on his part. Still good field position for the Lobos. Five minutes and eight seconds to go here in the half, in all three of their timeouts. Turley coming off to the sideline. Oh wait, no, he's just. Oh, oh no. Oh, yes, they said is. it touched somebody. You know, there was that pile oh, okay. of beast mark yeah, no, I, there. And it must have hit ooh, one those of them. Are, that's a sharp-eyed official. Yep. So it's actually going to be spotted all the way out to the 42. Big now, break there for the Lobos. Now, I wouldn't mind seeing the Lobos go with a quick pass out here to looks like who's uh, over there in the slot. You got um, Tidwell, Papa, and, and Raven. Raven. Raven in the slot. Let's go ahead and throw it to him. It's basically a run play at that point. Then come back and hit it with Turley. Bryant right now, three for seven for 31 yards as they give this one to. Was that Turley? I think it was Turley, but hey, you know what? No, that was Brimhall, wasn't it? No, it was. It, oh, that's It McCray. was uh, Jet McCray getting yeah. his first action on the offensive that's side. McCray, yeah. But hey, you know what? Two yards is two yards. If you can get another two yards, now you set up yourself a third and manageable. Second and eight. McCray had suffered that ankle injury in the first week. Came back and started playing on the defensive side. Now, seeing if he could pop one as the Lobos taking a look on back to the sideline. Bryant. Oh, good time to run it right here. Starts just, to change the play, looking to the right side. Now takes a snap, handed yeah. off. McCray coming to the near side, gets to the edge, runs it over the 50, and gets run out of bounds in Eastmark territory at the 47. Well, wind up gaining nine and has a comfort fit to enter his first down. Eastmark obviously thought it was going to be a pass, and they moved linebackers to the far side of the field. McCray ran it over here to the near side, so great adjustment. I'm not sure if it was an adjustment, but a good play call for Snowflake, ready for that one. Still pushing three out to the wide side. Uh, Baum is the lone man wide left, yeah. and McCray remains in the backfield, standing on Bryant's right. Four minutes and 18 seconds left in the half. Again going with McCray, again trying to get to the edge, again with a straight arm as he forces his way toward the 40, and whistles blowing. There is a flag oh. down. That's got to be in the area holding. It could be a face mask, although I didn't see that. But now they're setting up. Yep, it's a hold. But now they're probably setting up. Now I think you could throw that little flare pass out to Rabin. There's not anybody lined up over the top of him, so he should be able to get a good five yards if you can get it out to him in a hurry. So that hold pushes it back into the snowflake side of the field. Mm. Scrimmage will be the 43. Four minutes and 11 seconds left, first and 20, trailing 14 nothing. Yeah, those mistakes starting to pile up because of the timing, bad timing for the Lobos. McCray remains in as the running back. He's been able to find some success coming to this left side of the line as he moves to the right side of Bryant. Takes the snap, hand off McCray right up the gut, starts fanning out to the there right side as he gets to midfield before he's spilled, but after a gain of eight. Well, and a great block that time for the Lobos by Gunnar Richards. Uh, took out the linebacker, Carson Menar, and Menar's been making his presence felt so far defensively tonight, and uh, great job of stopping him. But, again, the formation is doing a lot of the damage for Snowflake as they're, as Eastmark has to decide, are they going to sell out to the pass or the run? And, again, you see no only one linebacker in the middle of the field. Fake the handoff. Turley's in there and deflected at the line. Will fall incomplete. And there's another possible thing Snowflake's got to look at is how good is the pass protection going to be if we're going to let Bryant try to throw the ball. The quick pass out to the flat is probably there, but looks like they're not really going to be able to give him a lot of time. Those bodies up front for Eastmar, they are big. Third down and 12. That stops the clock with 3.36 to go. This is still manageable. 14 nothing. the Lobos trail, and we'll get the ball to start the second half. I Four receivers for set and pass over here to Baum. Turley in the backfield. Try Straight. to set up a screen. Get this one to Turley. He's got a little bit of blocking help, mm. but fighting off of a block and then getting in the way of that one was Hinton. Oh, the blocker was there too. Just could not, just a better individual play by Hinton. Lobos had it set up pretty well, and if Turley could have got by that one defender, I think he had some room. Good play call. Just didn't quite happen, and now. Well, it was, it was 
Good play call, well executed, just better defense there by yep. Hinton. Better individual play. Who's back now to receive what he assumes is going to be a Bryant punt. Three minutes even to go, 14 nothing. And he thought about it, instead kicks this one away, and again signaling fair catch as this one's coming in on a hop. He's going to allow that one to go inside the 10. So another long field here for the Firebirds. Snowflake got the three and out, but a holding flag kind of derailed everything that especially Jet McRae was putting together. McRae going to come back out and man a safety spot. And Snowflake with three timeouts can still try to get the ball back relatively quickly. Just got to continue to stop the run. Yeah, I mean, you got to use all timeouts here. You can't go into the half with any of them. But as you said, so I, I'm going to dare Eastmark to throw. Uh, I'm I'm going to try to take away the outside pass, make him throw it in the middle where I might have a chance for an interception, but i got to sell out to the run. I, again, I bring a safety up uh, in order to help make some plays on that at the line of scrimmage. Kyson Lunt has been targeted more than almost every everybody else combined. As he's wide right side. Samples started in the pistol, now moves to Jensen's right. Shotgun snap had. And the handoff oh. to Samples, who slips a tackler at the line, bounces out to the near sideline, and then winds up running for 12 yards and a comfort fit denture first down before. Big play, good misdirection by Eastmark that time. I think the, the Snowflake defenders really just didn't know where the ball was, and that allowed him to get to the outside, and they're, they're going with tempo here. Two and a half minutes to play. The Firebirds do have one timeout. As they're taking a little bit of time after they hurry to the line, and now let's put a man in motion as handoff's going to go samples as he goes over the left side and winds up eventually being brought down by McCray, but he has a good gain of eight on first down. Well, that time I was it was a little easier to pick up why that misdirection is happening as Eastmark is bringing that man in motion, and the threat is that they might hand it off to him, and so now Snowflake has to worry about two backs in the backfield, and that's allowing them, uh, not allowing them to get to the ball carrier as fast as they might like. Coleman samples now with 13 carries and over 100 yards. As he gets the handoff, trying to come to the near side, and a holding flag comes out. Yeah. Lerma, I think, was being grabbed by Lunt. Yeah. That one was pretty easy, and especially when you do it right in front of the opposing bench, they're going <laughs> to let you know. But um, we'll see if Snowflake comes out with an adjustment in the second half. I know we'll talk about this at halftime, but, you know, go to that A-back. He sometimes lies up as tight end, sometimes as a slot. And, but they are running to his side most of the time. So a minute and 46 seconds left, and that's going to push the Firebirds behind the chains and be second in uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15. And the penalty does stop the clock. A surprise Snowflake still hasn't used a timeout. But watch for find Menar. Menar's on the right side of the line. Look to them for them to run that way. Samples move to... His quarterback's right side. Two receivers also coming to the short side of the field. Uh-oh. And now going in motion is that blocking back. Instead looking to pass this one in this direction. Lunt got behind the defense and is able to keep a foot in and complete the pass at the 30. Hmm. For some reason, I think Baum didn't think the ball was thrown. He stopped running with Lunt, and that allowed Lunt to have the time. He really just had time to set his feet. Yeah, I'll, and that's what it was. I think Bob thought it was out of bounds. And so he kind of gave up on it. Lunt did not. Oh, Lunt had both feet in. That, yeah. We saw it on the replay there. Great job by our crew. As that's a comfort fit denture first down out to the 32. A minute and 39 seconds left here in the half. 14 nothing. Eastmark leading. Still has one timeout that it can use as they're going to drop straight they're back. And again, again, look, this time... For not Lunt, that's Menar, oh who stays on his feet along the near sideline and now trying to outrun Bomb, fans out and is going to get into the end zone. Colin Menar, 68-yard score on oh, Bomb. Oh, Brimhall there with the stop and, and Bomb didn't help. Well, and the problem there, Brimhall's trying to make a play. He's trying to get a strip. He's going after the ball, which is fine. You just got to make sure you have a secondary defender there to make to, to be clear on the tackle. And Baum, again, thought Brimhall must have had him and just gave up on him. If I'm Brim, if I'm Baum, I'm going there in there after the ball also. Uh, that way we got two guys going after it, and that's a huge, huge mistake for the Lobos. Cameron Kelly in to try to make it 21-0 here. 
Is that uh, a huge shift in momentum as he has that one up and good. Three score lead here for Eastmark, just 90 seconds away from the intermission. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College. Expanding minds, transforming lives. Northland Pioneer College kickoff. When it's time to kick off your college education, do so at Northland Pioneer College. You'll pay the lowest tuition in the state. Lobos do have three timeouts, and these kicks have been uh, generally short. So if they can get a little bit of a return, started to see a, a little bit of success with the ground game over the last two series. Got Rabin and Papa that are back ready to receive as this one angling again toward Raven. Takes this one around the 15. Waits for his wedge to set up. Runs through one tackler. And that's still on Come his on. feet as he gets to the 30, the 35. And will eventually be marked down at 36. Blake there with the stop, who had that pick six in the second score. From 21 nothing. Lobos are trailing and have uh, an awful lot that they can kind of uh, go into the locker room and look into the mirror. You got the... Uh, the, proceed, the uh, encroachment flag on third and one that kind of set up the first score <coughs> in a way. A holding penalty. Yes. Uh, and then just those last two plays, so they just kind of stopped and didn't play to the whistle. Here's Bryant, who is three for nine for 35 yards. Gives this one to Turley, who's able to get that one over the 45 right. and eventually brought down at the, well, they'll say the 47 as a comfort fit denture first down with a minute and 15 seconds to play. You know, we saw this a little bit last week, Derek, where the, the Lobos kind of lost some fire and it took a big play from Turley to get them going. We'll see if he can do that again. Much different scenario, though. So that was when they were leading big. Now True. they're trailing by roughly the same. Is they're going to throw this one between the defenses. Tidwell's going to take that at the 30 and eventually be brought down by Hinton. At the third, now right at the 30. So another comfort fit denture first down on a gain of 33. And Bryant just about doubles his production on that one. And credit the Lobos for not giving up. And, and Turley and Rabin are, are, are your energy guys. And they've done a good job on the kick return, on the first play. And now Snowflake has some momentum. They got to keep it going. 58 seconds and three timeouts. Trips going to the right side. Bomb the lone man on the left. Turley's in the backfield. Bryant. Oh, I'm giving this ball to Rabin. Low snap, pitches this one out, and Turley immediately having to try to make three men miss, especially Menard. Clock runs. Boy, that Menard, he's a really good defender. You have to account for him on every play or else he's going to get in the backfield and disrupt something. 40 seconds as Turley moves over to Bryant's right. Rolling the pocket in that direction, stops, unloads, trying to get that one toward the pylon, but it's going to be picked off. The only question is whether it came down in bounds, and I don't think he I, did. I haven't seen a signal yet. Uh, now, interestingly, though, Snowflake still has not used a timeout. I thought they could have used one after that last run play. I mean, if you're going to run it, you might you got to be ready to use that timeout, and you can run it when you have three timeouts, but you got to use them. 32-yard line for scrimmage, 31 seconds left. This would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 45 to 48-yard field goal for Brown, which in elevation is within his range. Going to continue with the same formation. Bomb single man wide left. Said to hand it off, Turley. That's caught by collar. the horse collar, and there's no flags. Now you got, got everybody timeout. on Silflake's sideline. Asking why that's loud. You can hear some of the fans sitting around us that are equally perplexed as that goes for a one-yard game, but it sure did look like an illegal tackle. And it's pretty easy to see the ball carrier. It's not like he's hidden in there, and especially where you're behind him. Uh, well, especially when you're a six-foot-two-inch ball right, carrier. Yeah, I mean, everybody could see it. Um, well, so still time, though. Snowflake still has two timeouts left. But it's fourth but, and eight. But they got, yeah, they got to pick up this fourth down right here. And unfortunately, not unfortunately, because he can't do it, but it just puts Bryant in a very difficult situation. I like that they're rolling him out because he's not the tallest. And to see over East March line, you got to get him out 
in space. You think he should keep going? It, it seems like he's yeah. pulling up a little bit short and not taking full advantage of the rollout. Yeah, I think he could run it. Um, I just don't know if they've ever talked to him about that because it hasn't been necessary before. But right now, it may be necessary. Um, the other thing is they're not putting a guy over Raven. Uh, if they could get the ball to him a little quicker, I think they might have some, an opportunity for some su success there. So 24 seconds left. The Lobos have, uh, it, it, one might say, uh, allowed the last two scores. And are now trailing 21 nothing and trying to hang on to the last few ticks of this first half, but have to convert what's actually closer to a fourth and nine. No drop there as they look toward this one, trying to do a oh, little nice. hook and lateral, get it to McCray, who's going to be forced out of bounds after he picks up the comfort fit Dentures first down, taking that play out of the post in Butte. Yeah. Nice. Papa caught the initial and was able to get that one to McCray. And. It's going to be first and 10 from the 11. And they don't have to use a timeout since McCray got out of bounds. So well-timed pl play right there. Now can Snowflake take advantage of it? If you don't take advantage of it, it's all for nothing. So keep the energy up. See if you can. And, and again, because you have two timeouts left, the run is still on the table. McCray's in the backfield. Got the receiver is really close to the line on the right. Bomb all alone on the left side. Pitch this one out to McCray, who is going to be bottled up. And a quick timeout there taken by the Lobos with 12 seconds left. Wait, well, you could try the run. Well, they still so, got the timeout, well, so they could they could run it one more time. The problem is that 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 play takes too long. You know, Eastmark is big and they come hard, and I think that makes it very difficult. On, on that type of play. And now if you can get McCray in there early as we saw in the previous possession, I think you can make something happen. I mean, they only, what are they at, the 10 yard line? They they got back to the line of scrimmage there, so 11, 11 yard, yard line. line. Yeah, so very important that they, if they manage this correctly, they have three plays left. They have second, they have third, they have fourth. They just have to be able to stop. The, I mean, if they can't, don't get in the end zone, they have to be able to stop the clock on third down and at least get three points out of this. So Post and Butte run that play successfully at Round Valley. Yep. So Post and Butte run that play at Round Valley or Snowflake, and now the Lobos saying, "Thank don't, you very much." Don't be afraid to steal. That's right. So. Move the ball over to the far side. McCray remains in the backfield. Same formation with Baum all alone on the left. Short drop there for Bryant. Now starts to run out. Get this one up over the top. He missed McCray and instead tried to get Raven on the cross, but ball sailed on him a little bit. Yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough completion. Again, Bryant having a hard time seeing over the top. So they so but they manage the clock well. They have one timeout that can run one more play. It can't take too long. But they can run one more play and still stop the clock and try to get three out of this. But they, but man, you got to find somebody right now who says, "Coach, give me the ball. I'm going to run it. I'm going to get it into the end zone, whether it be the pass or the run." I kind of like the matchup of Bomb on the smaller corner on this side. But right now, now they put Papa out here. And Tidwell and Tidwell. He's got two on either side. McCray, the lone man in the backfield. Third down and ten. Jump ball, trying to get this one to Papa, who comes down it. with it. Did he come down with it? The flag is down in the end zone. Oh, say no, that the pass is incomplete. But it's going to be pass interference, which I don't know if that helps a whole lot with three seconds left. Uh, now, now, now coaches have to decide, do we just kick it? Because it should be placed at the one. Uh, yep, it's half the distance. So push this to the five-yard line. <laughs> the snowflake, yeah, at this point, you gotta, you got to take the points. That's a tough decision, uh, but you haven't. The spirited debate around us. Well, so. you know, you, have, you haven't. The offense has not been uh, consistent, we'll say. And because of that, I think Coach Solomon's deciding he's got to just take right here going into the locker room at halftime. Brown in, and Eastmark uh, calls a timeout to try to ice him. Hmm. Interesting. Now now I'm running that sucker. 
In a few ticks, we're going to have the Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store halftime show. We'll try to give you some uh, scores, scores from yeah. around the bend. Do, do you tease anything that's going I got, on with I got the nothing. Sholo and Blue Ridge? I got nothing, but I'll see what I can find out. Uh, Round Valley is hosting Fountain Hills. Oh, they're at Fountain Hills. So, yeah, that, I mean, it's, I mean, assuming Round Valley can win that, that should set up Round Valley Blue Ridge for the conference for the region championship, excuse me. And that's uh, at least the way that the rankings are breaking down, seemingly the only way Round Valley is going to be able to get in. Yeah, crazy. I mean, that's just, I mean, Round Valley's lost to some good teams. Yeah, by two. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. And they've just, uh, they've got tough. three losses by the, two, do they not? The top, the top six teams in the 3A are just really good, and it doesn't allow a lot of movement for everybody else. All right, Brown after Eastmark uses its final timeout, trying to kick this one in from about 22. Good snap, and it's up, and Looks it good. is good. All right. So the Lobos are able to get something on the board, and uh, just to try to put a bow on the conversation that was being shouted uh, over us, they, they do get the points and are going to get the ball. You put a touchdown up, it's only 21 to 10. That's right. So they're going to get the ball to start. There, there's... Uh, a little bit of uh, a long-term planning that was going off of the sideline for the Lobos as they will now go into the locker room. Down 21-3, to three, we will start the Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store halftime show right after these messages as this is Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise, at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable, always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. 
In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus, all kinds of bait, including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers, and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College. Expanding minds, transforming lives. At Summit Healthcare, you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We've recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. Since 2006, Beeler Orthodontics has been creating spectacular smiles in the White Mountains. Dr. Beeler and his team use innovative technology and cutting-edge orthodontics while still providing a hometown experience. From traditional braces and clear aligners to surgical orthodontics, Dr. Beeler works with smiles of all ages. So call them today to schedule a complimentary exam at 928-537-7775 or visit them at BeelerOrtho.com. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there, and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise, at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable. 
Always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x ray. 928 888 0002. 928-888-0002. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1 888 Glassman. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy, Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Collection of hiking, camping, hunting gear. Store north of Pine Top on Highway 260, just before you get Two, three, nine, ten. You hear me? Oh, we're not hot, too hot. Great. We got a where uh, go to commercial um I, I, who I'm sells the number one truck in america sholo ford that's right not only do they sell it sholo ford is the best place to buy it why guy hatch guarantees it in fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tint, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tint with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536 597 to Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. You've been there waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided... At Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire-rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in... It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College, 
Expanding minds, transforming lives. At Summit Healthcare, you'll find a level of care you might not expect from a rural hospital. We've recently received five stars from CMS, a prestigious ranking that less than 5% of facilities in Arizona earned. Our cancer center has proven its level of advanced care with a national accreditation from the Commission on Cancer. And we continue to add more doctors and services so that you don't have to leave the mountain to find the care you need. At Summit Healthcare, we're elevating care here at home. Since 2006, Beeler Orthodontics has been creating spectacular smiles in the White Mountains. Dr. Beeler and his team use innovative technology and cutting-edge orthodontics while still providing a hometown experience. From traditional braces and clear aligners to surgical orthodontics, Dr. Beeler works with smiles of all ages. So call them today to schedule a complimentary exam at 928-537-7775 or visit them at BeelerOrtho.com. Beeler Orthodontics. Live to smile. Love your smile. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right, not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise, at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable, always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x-ray. 928-888-0002. 928-888-0002. Hiking, camping, hunting, and fishing gear. Go to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store north of Pine Top on Highway 260 just before you get to the casino. So the Lobos had, uh, in one regard, you could say that they had played this half to a 7-3 to three count except for a pick six and then a, uh, a little bit of a miscue on the defensive side when one player had thought that uh, the play had been whistled dead and instead one of the Firebirds was going to stay on the spot and run it in. Yeah. Those are the biggest two plays right now that are separating these two teams. Well, and that's really what I talked about at the beginning for the keys of the game is you gotta you got to have – 
concentration in all phases of the game. And Snowflake had a couple of lapses, a couple penalties that were at really bad times, and then the turnover, obviously, and uh, the breakdown in coverage, as you said. They really have been in this game. they got to find an answer to the run, and I'm sure the coaching staff addressed that at halftime. You have to, you're going to have to sell out to the run. I'm going to make um, Jensen pass the ball, I'm, but I cannot allow Eastmark to continue to run it. Uh, I think Snowflake has the athletes on the outside in the perimeter to stop the pass. What, what do you look to them to do I, I on would, the offensive side? I would side? definitely like to see Turley get at least 15 carries this half. Um, and then sprinkle in some McCray. McCray a little bit shiftier, a little smaller back. Um, and I think use those two guys. I think, I still believe, this is just me, obviously my opinion, I still believe Snowflake can run the ball successfully. The passing game has been difficult for them. Um, it's been there at times, but I think that they got to make Eastmark commit to the run, and that will open up the pass. It's the Eastmark team, again, state champs last year, 3A. Started the year at CDO, which I don't know if you noticed, but was number three in the open rankings this yeah. week. So they, the loss to them, 21-14. to 14. The other loss was Northwest Christian, 37-35, which has uh, developed quite a reputation. Beat a Mesquite team, 41-20, to 20, and a Post and Butte team, 41-8, to 8, that Snowflake has at least either played or have one degree of separation from. So this is uh, a, a team that has a pretty good resume despite a uh, ranking that uh, has – had some people here at the Eastmark campus scratching their head. Yeah, I think the rankings all, all across the state are tough. We were talking at halftime off the air about uh, the Round Valley Elks. Uh, they're they're going to be most likely competing with Blue Ridge next week for the comp region championship, and yet they might not get into the playoffs. They're the second-best team in the East, and they may not get in the playoffs if they don't get some wins piled up. Um, and that's, that's kind of tough ranking-wise. Uh, it seems like the Valley schools are getting a little, bo little heavier coverage Although East Market Valley School, and they don't feel like they're getting exactly what they deserve. Um, so you're always going to have somebody upset with the rankings. So uh, you just got to go out and play the game. You got you to control what you can control, and that's wins. And tonight, specifically for Snowflake, they've got to have a great second half. We saw them have a good second half last week. We'll see if they can repeat that here tonight. All right, we'll start the second half right after this. 21 to 3 at halftime. It's Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. When you think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the deuce and at SholoFord.com. All right, that concludes the Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store halftime show for the best selection of hiking, camping, hunting, and fishing gear. Go to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store north of Pine Top on Highway 260 just before you get to the casino. 21-3 here to begin the second half. Eastmark won the toss and elected to receive, so the Lobos have two players back with Papa and Rabin going right to left. Here's the approach and angling toward Rabin, who's now outside the near hash, has two hands on that one, starts angling toward that foot near hash, and then nearly bursts through. Nice job there completing that possession defensively there. A couple well, of different Firebirds, but Papa was a step away. And I'm going to take a page out of Michael Jordan's book if I'm Rabin. I'm going to be like, hey, y'all are insulting me because you keep obviously kicking the ball to me instead of Papa. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to run with some intensity, and I think he's doing a good job of that. We'll see if the Lobos can continue that on their offense. Lobos have arguably had the most success offensively with McCray out there. He's going to start this half primarily as a defender. As he got Turley in the backfield. Raven split wide with two other receivers to the right side. Bomb alone on the left. Handoff goes Turley. Puts his head down and then is going to require another couple of tacklers before he is eventually stopped. But a big five-yard gain well, on first down. Coming out with a little intensity are the Lobos. And... And I really think Turley is the guy who kind of can get them going, him or Papa. But 
Uh, obviously, Papa's got to have the ball in his hands so, via the pass. But I'm going to just keep running this ball and see if uh, Eastmark can actually stop me. Going to the right side, you got Papa, Tidwell, and then Rabin right off the line. Turley again, the lone man in the backfield. Second down and six as he gets the call. Angles this one to the far side. Gets through the first level over the midfield line and then brought down at the 45-yard line. Gain of 13. Comfort fit denture first down. Well, Keaton Blake made the tackle, but not until 10 yards down the field. So great intensity, great push up front by the heavies of the Snowflake Lobos. Blake now limping a little bit. Got a lot of players going both ways for the Firebirds. As now back into Eastmark territory goes Snowflake. Fake the handoff, kick this one out. Rabin needs some blocking help as he's forced toward the sideline. Still able to turn the corner, but that's a tough, tough way to gain two. Yeah, it was tough, but Ray, credit Rabin just kind of making an individual effort there in order to make something happen. But um, again, the formations that Snowflake is coming out with is forcing Eastmark to only put one linebacker in the middle. I'm going to keep running it and hope that you can get the linebacker to go the wrong way, and that's when you're going to bust big plays. There's only one. It's, he's a good one, Menard, but um, but see if you can't catch them going the wrong way. Actually gave him four yards on that one, huh. so second down and six. Still in the first minute of the second half as here's Bryant with the three receivers. Coming to the near side, low toss. Don't it was like eventually had by Turley, and he was fortunate to only lose a few. Menard got there first, but that was a very difficult exchange there for Turley. Yeah, it's, it's not... There's really not much that he can do with that. As we see uh, Balu come out of the game, I was about to say he's the only guy in the middle of that field because Menard is kind of playing the defensive end right now. But he's got his hands on his hips already, does Menard. 9.42 now left in the third quarter, and Snowflake after the four-yard loss facing third and ten. They're in East Merrick territory of the Lobos as Turley now moves over to Bryant's right side. They're going to move the pocket in that direction. Now steps up, fires to the oh. far sideline. Tidwell's got that one right at the yard marker. Uh, Snowflake's sideline thinks move the chains, and the officials agree. A comfort fit denture first down on the sixth completion for Bryant, who now goes over the century mark. And I'll give credit to, uh, right there to Bryant. He put all he had into that throw in order to get that out there in a timely fashion. And Tidwell kept his concentration and uh, hauled that one in for a big first down for the Lobos. Moving to the 36. Again, three receivers coming to the near side to Bryant's left. Bomb the lone man on the right side. Turley in the backfield gets the call, but he's met at the Ooh. line of scrimmage. He's still up, forcing a few players to get involved in the tackle. But Blake, who looked like he was limping a little bit ago, is able to keep him from gaining anything but one. Well, you know, and but, but again, don't let that dissuade you. Blake got lucky that time. He, Blake is crashing hard, but he's having to pick a hole. And sometimes he picks right like that one, and sometimes he picks wrong, and Turley gets 11 yards. So you can't give that up. You just got to maybe make sure you try to get somebody to chip off and get Blake in that secondary. But now he's going to vacate and leave Balu in the middle. Same formation. Bomb all alone on the right. Fake the handoff. No, they give it to Turley. Goes to the right side, then cuts it back to the interior. Runs for 10 yards, make it 15. Another comfort fit denture first down see? as the Lobos are approaching the red zone. And see, Balu came up hard, but he missed. He missed the hole, and that left nobody in the middle of the field for Eastmark to make a tackle, and Turley had nowhere to go but up the field. First and 10 from the 19, 21 to 3, Eastmark leading. Snowflake put three on in the final seconds of the first half and are now threatening at the start of the second. Bryant unloads, going to the far side where Bob's caught that one, slips one tackler, but then is brought down by another two. Gain of six on the first down play, make it second and four. But you can kind of feel the rhythm, right? The run game has allowed the pass game to be open, but the the run game is where it starts and ends for Snowflake, and it puts Bryant in a good rhythm. It puts the defenders on their heels a little bit more and allows their receivers to be open. Actually an eight-yard gain. Turley in the backfield on second and two. Same formation. Gets oh. the call, but he's met in the backfield. Blake got there, right, and he drops him for a two-yard loss. And again, those linebackers, they are just coming hard. They are not respecting the line play of Snowflake, and they're just coming hard. And that, again, he guessed right that time. Um, so now Snowflake coaching staff got to make a little adjustment there. Obviously, something in their tape has allowed them to read that play, but again, sometimes they miss. And so we've got to find a little counter to that play and send totally to the other side where there will be no linebacker to help. 
Third and three. And this is that formation, I think, right here. Turley starts on the right. Again, a four receiver set with three coming to the near side. Nearly looked as if there was somebody in the neutral zone. Instead, they're going to let the ball go. Bryant gets away from one tackler, oh. throws this one into the end zone where he's looking for Papa, but it was short. But again, it looked as if one of the Firebirds were in the uh, neutral zone. Was that Rosales who – Rosales was in the end zone defending. Yeah, and, and Papa was kind of open. Raven was more open underneath, but I think Bryant was just running for his life right there and uh, could not find Raven. I think Raven might have been able to get in the end zone. So, you know, this could be the game right here for Snowflake. So I like this call of going for it. Fourth down and three from the 12. 6.42 to go here in the third. 21-3 to three is, again, a hard count. They're coming hard. Firebirds don't flinch. Now Bryant throws this one. Looking for Papa in the end zone. He's got it for the 12-yard score. A Mountain Mobile Auto Glass touchdown. Well, credit the line up front. They go max protection. They leave the back end Turley to help pick up the blitz because Eastmark was coming hard, and Snowflake picks it up, and Bryant showing some savvy in the pocket. Uh, just deliver the ball right when it, he let he waited till Papa came free, and that's hard to do when you know that rush is coming. So credit Bryant for for being patient, allowing that play to develop. Lobos have scored the last nine. Here's Brown trying to make it ten. He had the 22-yard field goal to get the Lobos on the board, and this one is away yep. and good. 21-10, 6:38 to go in the third quarter. The Lobos showing some signs of life. This is Joe Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk1067.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus, all kinds of bait, including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers, and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. The whole first half. 6.38 to go, 21 to 10. Lobos have been able to nearly cut Eastmark's lead in half. Also, it took about five and a half minutes off of the clock, which may not be the best thing for Snowflake, but that's okay. Here's Brown with the Northland Pioneer College kickoff. Oh. When it's time to kick off your college education, do so at Northland Pioneer College. Pay the lowest tuition in the state is Lunt. Now he's able to take that one off his shoe tops and eventually run that out to the 35, so a big return. And now here come the Firebirds who are in need of an answer. Big collision out there by the Snowflake Crazy coming down the field and just taking out would-be blockers, but Lunt was running away from it, so gives them good field possession. It's a big defensive possession for the Lobos right here. Those guys up front have got to keep the block. Boy, and Ramar Williams, just a, the, the tight, the quote-unquote tight end, he just does a great job of, of setting that edge and allows the not only the running back to turn the corner, but the center can turn the corner for each mark as well, and they get well into the secondary before they're even made in contact by the defense. Pistol formation to start, but now Sample's invited to come up to Jensen's right. Push this one out to the East Mark 46. Coming this way. As here comes the lead blocker coming to the right side, but now they pull him going to the other direction. Oh, yeah, As did. now Samples runs over the 50 before Brent White is able to bring him down. But, man, he stays on his feet and winds up gaining six. Yeah, I mean, East Lerma got up there to knock him down after a one-yard gain, but kind of seen this story before where Samples gets held in check in the first down carry but is able to find a, a seam to run through in the second. Well, Aiden Coot came up to help make that play as well. And so, like that the linebackers are going to sell out a little bit more on the run. I think they have to do that. You have to force East Mark to pass. Wildcat formation now with Hinton. In at quarterback, Samples on his left, fake the handoff. He's yeah, going to keep not, that one going to the left side. It. Slips one tackler. Now a flag comes out, and they got an unhappy Firebird. But meanwhile, Hinton's running into the end zone. He's out of bounds outside the goal line. But uh, hold on a minute. Yeah, it, it's coming back, but uh, you had Maximo Cano, who was very unhappy, and he's still barking at the official. I think yeah. that he's about to be invited to come to the sideline and cool off. Yeah, I think so, because I'm not sure what he's unhappy about. That that hold was very vital to springing 
Hinton. But listen, I'm going to say it again. When Hinton is in the backfield as the quarterback, he is keeping the ball. <laughs> like, what? That's all you got. He's not. If he throws it, it's not going to be good. So don't worry about it too much. 347 left. I think they're going back with the regular quarterback and now. And Jensen's off the sideline. So it's se it's first, no, second and 19. Back into Eastmark territory. The Lobos had watched after a drive had started off with a lot of positivity, get derailed by a hold. Now see if Eastmark is able to recover. Samples moving to Jensen's left. Going this way. And they fake the handoff. Now I think Jensen didn't necessarily want to pull that one, so it's going to be a busted play that goes for yeah. no gain. It was coming this way. As uh, Minar, Carson Minar had set the edge, but misdirection. And so now we see Eastmark maybe feeling a little pressure after the last drive by Snowflake having a little problem with execution. And uh, it's really helping out now. Now you're in a pa pass situation, obviously. And I think you still got to bring somebody. I would still blitz a linebacker and see if Jensen can handle the pressure. Because I'm thinking if I can put pressure on him, I might be able to get a ball up in the air where I might have a play on it. Lund's going to get matched up on the far side with Papa in front of him, giving him a little bit of space. Coleman's in the backfield. Jensen needing 18 yards, looking in Lund's direction. Throws underneath. And nearly dislodged. Oh. And a penalty flag comes out. They're going to call interference. That's awful. Oh, that's that is right well there. Bam, timed. bam. That is well timed. We need another replay. Here we can see it. Oh, oh that's, that's a bad perfectly call. timed. They're, they're going to talk about that, and hopefully and reason will prevail. Now, they might have thrown the flag because they thought he led with the helmet, but clearly he led with the shoulder pad. We can, we can, send, them, we can send them the footage. Um, but, man, that's a great play by Papa. Really just a poor pass by Jensen. He just let that ball be up in the air too long and allowed Papa to come off his receiver and come make a play on the ball. There we go. Nice job by the officials to huddle up yeah. and get eight eyeballs on that one. Now Eastmark's sideline is furious, but that, as you can see by the replays, nice job there by a camera crew yeah. as that was the right call to pick that one up and make it fourth and 18. Yeah, and, and credit Papa for having some discipline of not leading with the helmet because that's an easy play to let your helmet get in front there. But he let, he brought that shoulder pad in and helped separate the ball from the would-be receiver. Punts have been short. As Brimhall is standing between his 20 and 25. Snowflake showing a little bit of pressure. Yeah, this came. one's away. It's another short punt. Brimhall telling everybody to get out of the way. Well, they just ran into him. As <laughs> now there comes a flag. Eastmark having a little bit of a meltdown here. Wow. Gonzalez that's, tackled him. That's great. That's heads up play by Brimhall, though. He saw the short punt. He's like, well, I'm going to put the fair catch signal up, and I'm going to go for it knowing knowing that he's going to run into somebody. And a uh, great job by Brimhall. Now, is this, a, is this a personal foul? Yeah, running into the receiver. I don't know. He's talking to somebody. I don't know if they have a microphone over there, but we'll see how many it is. There's, he's running by 10, so there's, there's the 15, so... So All things going in the direction of the Lobos right they now. They just went 70 yards on the initial possession, have scored the last 10, used a holding flag to stop the Firebird attack here on their first possession. Now with 2.45 to go in the third quarter, the Lobos back out offensively. Turley, who has 42 yards on 13 carries, standing on Bryant's right, has completed uh, 8 of 18 for 122 yards. They're going to let him throw on the first opportunity. Sends this one to the far side where Baum catches it over the 45, spun down at the 46 or 7, gain of 6 or 7, and another good play on first down for the Lobos. So what does that do for Snowflake? It allows them to open up things because it's going to free, it's going to make the linebacker think he can't, can't come as hard as they've been coming. Balu was the linebacker there, and he comes, he comes to the line of scrimmage, the ball's away, and he's like, well, that was dumb. So now we'll see if he can delay a little bit, which might open up the running game. Turley's off to the sideline. That puts McCray in the backfield. Trips to the near side, it goes Rabin, Tidwell, and then Papa. Second down and three. Another drop back here for Bryant, who's going to have to move away from the pocket as he's going to be pressured and runs out of bounds and will go down as a sack as he loses about a yard. 
Boy, those linebackers for East, East Mark just come so hard. Keaton Blake that time coming off the edge. So when they bring the trips to this side, Blake is looks like he's in coverage, but he has no intention of being in coverage. He is coming hard after the quarterback uh, because they are assuming pass, and so far they've been right a lot of the time. So I think Snowflake can take advantage of the aggressiveness, but right now that's really helping Eastmark defensively right now. Two on either side. Split wide on the left is Rabin and Baum. McCray in the backfield, third down and five. This time with pressure. Sends this one out to the near side where Baum catches it over the midfield stripe. Gains six and a comfort fit denture first down. Well, and really Eastmark, they're coming hard with the linebackers on the run, but they're soft on the secondary. And I think that Snowflake uh, coaching staff meant, saw that at halftime, and now they're going to those quick passes. And I think that's a great thing because it allows Bryant to get rid of the ball before the rush gets to him. 21-10, to 10, Eastmark with the lead, but the Lobos have wrestled away a little bit of momentum. Minute and 38 seconds left here in the third quarter as McCray gets the carry, chips his way up the middle and winds up falling forward for a couple of yards before Hinton brings him down. Yeah, Hinton's a big big part of the machine for Eastmark. He's, he plays both ways. A lot of these guys do, as you mentioned, Derek, and we'll see how their conditioning holds up, and we'll see if the altitude training for Snowflake can provide any advantage as we're getting near the fourth quarter. But I'm going to keep relying on my, my linemen to keep putting pressure on the defensive line. Second and eight, approaching one minute to play here in the third. Now Raven comes in motion. He's going to get the call. And I thought I saw a flag come out. Instead, it's going to be a hard-fought gain of three. Did I see a flag come out? It looked like something went flying, but I don't think it was a – well, that was a flag. I think that uh, maybe this is motion on the, on the Lobos. Yeah. Sideline oh, side line. Line. Snowflake, man. Yeah. All right. Snowflake has a lot of coaches. One of them is bound to get in the way. But that's why they give you the warning. So no penalty. Third down and five. 21-10. In the final seconds here of the third quarter, the Lobos have scored the last 10 going into the, or back, I should say, to the final minutes of the second quarter. Boy, a little play action here, right? Might freeze the linebackers and allow the receiver to get open. Turley's back out there as the running back. Going to move the pocket toward him. Is now unloading, trying to get this one behind the defense and a lot of contact, Ooh. but it's going to fall incomplete. And the Lobo fans around us thought that Papa was being held. I think he was also. That's a that's a break for Eastmark, I believe, because Papa was definitely held on the coverage over there was Colin Menar, and I think he got away with one. I guess the argument to the alternative would be that they were both kind of fighting with each other. It's possible. I think Papa did kind of shed him off a little bit, but the ball was already past him at that point. Bryant out here as the, the punter. Is the fake going to happen? And he's thinking about it. Now he winds up and throws this one that's picked up. Blake with his second interception as he's going to run this one to the far sideline. It was looking for Tidwell, who hadn't finished his route. And now, no, there is not. I thought there was some scuffling going on the far sideline, but... It's just some celebratory Firebirds. And Tidwell was open, but just a great play by Blake to cut in front of it. Had Bryant been able to put a little air under that, Tidwell probably would have scored. Tough break, though, as all the momentum had been going Snowflake's way, and that just takes some air out of the sails. And credit those line those linebackers for Eastmark are there. Players, they can they can do, do things on both offense and defense. Hitting in as the Wildcat quarterback. Three receivers with two coming to the right. Samples also in the backfield as the Firebirds get the stop. Still lead 21 to 10. This time he hands it off to Samples. Nope. He's going to be brought down by Coor, but he, he in kept Snowflake it. territory. He kept it. Oh, he did. Yeah, he kept it. Well, he gains four, and that's how the third quarter is going to end. It's a tight ball game, 21 to 10, Eastmark with the lead. It's Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent now has three locations to serve you. Snowflake, Lakeside, and now Sholo. And with over 85 years combined experience in auto glass and over 40 years of combined experience in window tent, you can trust the experts at Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tent with your vehicle. Call them today. Just call 536-5972. Mountain Mobile Auto Glass. Cash back to you. Yeah. 
So taking a look here at the – well, Tidwell had just started. Here, here you can see a better replay. Is he, he had just turned, but uh, it was a pass that was kind of fired on a line from uh, Bryant. It didn't look like Blake was – yeah, if, if he had just le left that up a little bit, it looked like that was probably going to be six. But Cause credit Blake, Blake he, he didn't look like he was expecting any kind of punting activity. No, from the no, they were playing defense the whole way. And Blake, you know, he goes about 6'2", so, and he had to reach up for that one. So, you know, that ball's a little bit higher, and good things are happening. But now that's in the pass. Now you've got to make a stop. Second down and six. Starting the fourth quarter, Firebirds have the football. It looked like they had a, t a touchdown, but it was pulled off because of a holding flag. So now here's Samples going to go from the left to the right as he is going to be brought down after a relatively short gain of two to make it a huge third down and four. There's still plenty of time for the Lobos. Well, Core's doing a good job of reading that center pull. Again, they're taking the tight end to the right side in that last play, and so that's the direction they're going to run it. I'm finding number seven and number five, wherever they are, even if it's in motion, that's where the ball's going to go. Now we see number five line up on this near sideline as the tight end. I'm expecting that ball's probably going to come this way. Starts up and into the neutral zone come the Lobos. Now that definitely is the third time. It might be the fourth. You know, there's something that they must that the, the quarterback must be doing that's really causing the, the, the Snowflake defensive linemen to, to really believe that that's the snap. Uh, Snowflake comes in as the number 13 team, and the East Mark, I believe, is number 10. So if everything were to stand as it is right now, CDO would vacate a spot and make it for the top 17 to go to the state. Is now run down in the backfield. Is that Lerma? Yep, of course. Samples gains a yard. But it's interesting because this, again, looks like two pretty good football teams. And you're hoping that somebody gets into the open to yeah. make sure that they both are able to get in there. Right. You know, the problem for Snowflake tonight is they just haven't been quite sharp enough. They 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 came out. I love that they came out in the second half and played with energy, but they just have made a, just a few critical mistakes that they really need to clean up come playoff time, assuming that they make it. Yeah, we so. don't have a name for 63. He's yeah. uh, right now looking like he's uh, having his right leg tended to. Yeah, and it was one of those classic uh, get rolled up on the backside for offensive linemen, but he's going to try to get up. It is the right leg that he's favoring, and good to see that he's able to walk off on his own power. 21-10, 10 minutes and 56 seconds left. Eastmark has the football in the lead. They've pushed it all the way to the Snowflake 40. Got good field position after the second Bryant interception. And that one coming on a fake punt. But Jensen, who's out there, 5 of 9 for 98 yards. The bigger stories, though, have been Jared Hinton, who's run 11 times for 51 yards, and then Coleman Samples, who averages 96.6. He's got 126 on 19 carries. He's going to come out and start this in the pistol formation, at least initially, but he's got Williams, who starts on the left side of the line. Yep. And now they're going to move him, even with the quarterback on the left. Cano in motion, fake the handoff to him. Now Jensen's trying to run for his life, going to the right side. White makes a diving attempt, but can't get to him. And Jensen runs out of bounds right around the line of scrimmage to make yeah. it third and long. I think they might even got it, get him for a loss. So it is a sack forced there by White. Wow, a big yeah. sack, four yards. Yeah. So credit the young man, but he was coming with everything he had. And again, an opportunity for Snowflake to get a stop. And Boy, with 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes to go, Eastmark's got to be thinking about the clock as well. Hitting in at quarterback. Oh, well, guess this what? Leads me to believe that the Lobos are going to have to stop him twice. Move samples over to the left. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, running to the left side, get and it. gets stopped at the 40. There's Lerma. That makes it fourth and 10. So what do you do? Do you go ahead and roll the dice? I mean... I got a, uh, uh, I don't know. You're pretty deep into Lobo territory. But if you allow Snowflake to score here, if you give this ball up and this go to field position, and it's now a one possession game, and anything can happen, yeah, I think you got to punt this away. Gessner's in to punt, and Brimhall standing at his 10. 
21 to 10, 10 minutes to go and the clock moving. There's still plenty of time for the Lobos. Eastmark trying to hang on and secure a big win. Is this one away? Bentley got in there, is now Brimhall's permitted the fair catch. Yes. They learned their lesson. So opportunities, opportunities. You got nine minutes and 42 seconds, still enough time. All three timeouts, but not, not into that territory yet. But Snowflake has got to put together a, a drive, and it's got to take probably less than five minutes in order to give yourself enough time to get a stop and get the ball back. Now, you mentioned that they scored on the first possession, and it lasted five minutes and, I believe, 18 seconds. Yeah, something like that would be pretty nice. So here come to the right side, Baum and Papa. Split backs for the first time since the first quarter. Bryant starting on his own 10-yard line. Takes the snap, fakes the give, throw this out to the near side where Papa slips oh, one tackler, gets to the sideline, and now knocked out of bounds. Hinton got there, but that should be enough for a comfort fit. Denture's first down, it is. Great individual effort by Papa to shed the first tackler. Now he just needs to get a little help on the outside blocking, and I think he could get turn that even to more positive yards. Third catch for Papa. He has 30 yards and a Lobo touchdown. Did stop the clock. 9.36 left, 21-10. Eastmark with the lead. Continuing with the split back formation. Two receivers going to the far side, and I think the Lobos were on different pages. Yeah. Yeah, but I tell you what, when they go to this split back formation and they put the receivers, let's say, on this last possession to the far side, the running lanes to the near sideline, I think, are pretty open because Eastmark is going to send lineback a linebacker over there and they leave this corner here on the near sideline and I like I like my chances with either McCray uh, McCray or uh, wow drawing a blank well they got bomb Turley um, out there on him first and 15 with time Bryant now goes to the far sideline another well defended pass as Raven comes down with it but at the same time as a defender what's the Papa I beg your pardon they're gonna say it's incomplete Man, the running lane is so open on this near sideline with that formation. Menard there with the defense. Tried to go for the home run on first and 15. Backed up at their 16. Instead now facing second and 15. That was a 50-50 ball that both players really left it all out there trying to come down with. And, and Papa's the type of guy who can go up and make that play. Just a pretty good defense on that by Menard as well. So now second and 15. Papa comes out wide right. Got receivers on either side. Tidwell right now on the right side of the line. As Papa starts coming in motion in this direction, Bryant with time as he drops back. Now throws this one underneath. Kind of put that one a little bit too high for Papa. Makes it third and 15. Balu right there all over that on the coverage. Uh, Pop not that, I mean, it's a good play, but the formation just did not work because Papa came right underneath the nose of Balu, and he read that and went with him. Probably a good thing for Papa that that wasn't complete. <laughs> Because uh, Balu's a big boy. 9.24 to go. 21-10, Eastmark leading. And now Turley, the lone man in the backfield, as Tripp's going out wide left. That includes Rabin and Tidwell. Papa also going out wide left. Nope, beg your pardon. He's on the right side. So now hard snap. Bryant pressured from behind. Throws this one out to Papa, but... Did he oh, catch it? Catch. Did yeah. it say? Oh. He catches it shy Hard of the see. yard marker. Hmm. Can't tell where they're sitting. No, okay, so they're going back to the original line of scrimmage. It's an incomplete pass. He was out of bounds when he caught it. Yeah, just thrown a little high again. Um, just a hair high. Great effort by Papa to try to bring that one in. But his momentum took him just a hair out of bounds. And again, corners for... Oh, well, now they're gonna now they're gonna punt. Mm. Brown gonna punt this one. He had one opportunity in the first quarter. Kind of came off the side of his foot. This Hinton standing at his forty or the Ooh. Snowflake forty-six yard line is this one much better kick. Low bounces at the fifty. Hinton comes down and takes that one and then gets lit up. Who was that there for the Lobos? That was oh no, that was not. Lerma that was, was Tyler lurking. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Big hit there to drive it back into Firebird territory. 
So 9-11 to go. It's a two-possession ball game. And each side has all three of their timeouts. And, you know, perhaps Snowflake can take that and use that, that energy that Perry just provided and, and make something happen on the defensive end. they got to get a turnover. Um, a three and out would go a long ways right here. I would expect Eastmark to come out and put and keep this ball on the ground and see if they can't pick up first downs and chew clock. you got, you got a running back who's run for 126 yards and another that's run for 55. But one of the touchdowns that the Firebirds were able to score in the first half was a pick six, and the other one was on a play that uh, just looked as if one of the defenders kind of thought it was over. So it's not as if the Snowflake defense has been hemorrhaging yards and points. They've also shut them out thus far in the second half as that one is the sample's run for four. He's now with 130 yards as Coor got there first with the stop. But they can get the ball back fast is what I'm suggesting. Yeah, they just got to come up with some stops right here. That ball's coming this way. Going to say it's second and five. Also got a stop from jumping as the handoff comes to Samples. Pursued from behind by Lerma. Somebody got to him up front, and I'm guessing it was probably Core. It was Core. He's coming out from the bottom of the pile. Lerma got him from behind. But Lerma's starting to read that a little bit, and he's coming in from the back side. So good, good job. Now they got a tough third down situation. Uh, play action could be in play here, though, for Eastmark. As Snowflake is really starting to sell out to the run. Find the tight end. He's on the far side. Jensen stays out there as the quarterback. Moves samples to his right. Two receivers also going in that direction. And now Jensen takes a look at his sideline, wants to change the play. Lots of time on the play clock. Starts redirecting traffic. Oh. Going to move Williams gonna outside. They're going to pass it. Got three receivers now going to the far side. Three seconds to get the playoff. Snap his hat. Handoff instead goes Samples, who is They're going to run for four. May oh, Ooh, a very generous spot. Now, oh, he keeps moving forward. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Wow. Um, that Comfort is... fit Denture first down, but that was... The very picture of generosity where that ball wound Ooh. up being placed. I mean, he was clearly inside the marker where he was standing. That's Dare tough. I suggest dinner reservations are in play? <laughs> Keeps the clock running. It's 7.15. First and 10, 21 to 10. East mark with the lead. And let's see how huge that winds up being. As Sample is able to get skinny and spin around. This time he is dropped at the 30, what is that, the 41. Well, they're going to move him back to the 42. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now they make up for it, but it's a little late if you're a Snowflake fan. But credit Eastmark. You know, they, they've, they've come in with an obvious game plan. They, they obviously believe that Snowflake could not stop their run game. They haven't thrown it a whole lot. Um, the run game, though, as you mentioned, well over 100 yards they're leading back. Well, they got 141 from Samples and 55 from Hinton. Now Hinton back out there with Jensen. Moves to his right side. Leading blocker starts moving in that direction as well. That's Minar. Give it to him as he's met in the middle of the defense and stopped for no gain, but the clock's running. Six minutes and 18 seconds left. Well, and Minar tried to pull that time and come in motion, but he was too late. And so Snowflake able to get to the ball carry before that extra blocker was there. So another third down situation. Might have been even a drop for a loss. So six minutes left. 11-point yeah, game. Big play right here. Jensen's out there as the quarterback. Hitting. Starts in the pistol. Got Minar off the line on the right. Snowflake starting to crowd. Ten seconds on the play clock as they're going to unload and throw this one. And nearly intercepted. Another perfectly timed collision, this time from Papa. And no flags. Yep. Perfect, and again, that ball just thrown off to the side, and that allowed Papa to get a hand in there and didn't allow Menard to use his body to shield him. So just a small miscue by Jensen right there goes in the Lobos' favor. Brimhall off the sidelines as the Lobos expecting a punt. Gesner's out there to kick it. Yeah, you can't fake it right, right here if you're East Mark because if you don't get it, it just provides too much momentum for Snowflake, although an 11-point cushion is getting safer by the second. There's only 542 left, so the Lobos are going to have to hustle. 
Got the snap away, a little bit of pressure, but he kicks it toward the near sideline. It's going to be good field position for Snowflake. Let's see where they wind up. Uh, wow. Wow. Continuing he, uh, he, around the 25-ish. He wanted him to stop about 10 yards earlier, and he kept coming. So, so it prevents the big play. Field position is middling, but still just 537 left and 11 points separating. Snowflake, you, you figure at this juncture is probably thinking they got to go for two and uh, successfully execute an onside kick. Yeah, and, and they're also thinking, I'm sure, that they got to go to the air. Um, I got to keep keep that run in, the, in your back pocket, though. I think Turley can make big things happen if he can get into the secondary. Hitting in Blake right now in the middle of that. Oh, my. It's two of their own players. Coaches or coaches or a, or a player and a coach, somebody. But I don't know why. I don't know what they. Oh, there's a player at the bottom of it. They need security. Oh, my. It's a fan. You know, the, the player right now, it looks like yeah, the coaches he's on his are back. tending to him. I, the fan. Well, welcome to the East Valley. Huh. The officials all, all started blowing the play dead. We thought that thought there's, a, a, there's a bicycle on the track, so it looks as – oh, it is? Okay, that, that's a police officer, so – Jeez. Oh, my goodness. That poor young man on the, the player, he's he's down. Well, the student looks like he's wearing a, a jersey. All right, well, meanwhile – Here's Rabin, who's going to be caught in the backfield. So uh, is the fight, they got a player who's still fl uh, flat on his back and being tended to. It, that was uh, one that I have never seen. Been covering high yeah. school football for 20 years, and uh, that's a new one for me. Uh, <laughs> here, here we are. Meanwhile, one-yard loss, clock approaching five minutes to play, second and 11. Bryant rolling to his left. Get some blocking help now as he's looking downfield. Going to flip this one up where he's got a man a little bit of separation with Tidwell, but sends it a little bit too high. Got it. I mean, people aren't going to like this, but receivers for Snowflake, they give up on plays a little too much. Tidwell just thought he wasn't going to throw it, and had he just kept running at the speed he was at, which is what Bryant is expecting him to do, he probably gets that and gets popped by the defenders. So you got to give your quarterback options. You cannot give up on plays. You, you could have the next You could have the next uh, Mahomes on your hand. <laughs> Third and 11. Now Snowflake does still have all of its timeouts, so it can go ahead and kick this away if it needs. Is there trying to set up a screen, get this one to Turley, but a well-read play there defensively by the Firebirds, so it's going to stop him short about six yards. Yeah. Oh. oh, and a flag comes out. Perhaps some chippiness. Oh, there. They are. Somebody's telling somebody to get off the field because he just cost his team 15 yards and a first down. I think this one's going to go against uh, Balu. All right, a comfort fit denture first down. As uh, was going to be fourth down and four, instead, move it out to the Snowflake 44-yard line, and now Eastmark's going to take a timeout. Well, this has become yeah, a very eventful last three plays, where you got a fight on the sideline, uh, something in the uh, between the lines, and now a timeout with 4:45 to go. 21 to 10, Firebirds lead. This is Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk1067.com. You've been there, waiting forever at the gas station for the guy to free up so he can fill up your propane tank. Or worse, when the only qualified propane technician decided to stay home that day. Yep, you've been there, and I have too. That's why now I get my propane from Ace Hardware every time. You get Ace Hardware's world-famous customer service when you stop in for propane. That's right, you get in, you get out, and you get a great deal on propane and everything else. From Ace Hardware at their locations in Pine Top and Heber. Ace Hardware is proud to support White Mountain Sports. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. 
That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Try to start a draw with Turley, who's still on his feet as he gets to the 45. Eventually spun down, gains only one. The Lobo's trying to hurry four and a half minutes as Ramsey was able to stop him. Gains, well, maybe just one. Yeah, and just a great individual effort by Ramsey right there because the play was pretty well set up, but he just shed the block and got hold of Turley, and he wasn't letting go. Second and nine. There's still enough time, but the Lobo's got to hurry. Trailing 11. As Bryant, working from the shotgun, drops back, forced to come up in the pocket. Here comes a flag as this is probably going to be a hold. Yeah, the linebackers have – I mean, there's been at least one linebacker blitzing every single time. So it's going to be a hold on Snowflake right now. The official asking Eastmark if it wants to accept that penalty, which they say no, we'll take third down and a lot. Wow, interesting. So it was a sack, two-yard loss, third and 11, and the clock should start as soon as they get this thing set. Well, 4.06 left. Snowflake likes to run the stop routes on this situation. Look like you're going deep and then come back to the ball. Got to get past the marker, though. Taking a look for Popo, I think, is wide left. Bryant drops back instead looking in this direction. Come back and has this one picked off. That's Minar who's going to go down the near sideline, and for the first time in the second half, Eastmark has scored. Colin Minar with that pick six, the second of the ball game that the Lobos have permitted. Well, Papa and Bryant just not on the same page right there. Uh, Bryant was expecting Papa to run that comeback route, but Papa saw something. I think he saw Minar coming up, and so Papa was going to keep going down the field. Bryant had already thrown the ball, though. And uh, those are the ones you just can't you can't bring it back, unfortunately. That might have been a bit of a redemptive play there for Minar. I think he might have been the guilty party of the drive extending personal foul oh, on yeah. sportsmanlike conduct. So he he's able to pick that one off and uh, put the game on ice. So I think at this point, with 3:48 to go, we can safely assume, barring something exceptionally unusual, that the Miraculous. Firebirds just clinched it. Miraculous, even. Oh, oh well, they're. Bad snap. Now they're going to try to run this one in. And the Lobos are <laughs> able to deny. Core there with the stop. But 3.48 to go, 27 to 10. East Mark with the lead. It's show before its presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Arno. I might not be comfortable on the basketball court, but I promise at Comfort Fit Dentures, you'll feel comfortable. Always. Comfort Fit Dentures has dentures starting at $499 with payment plans, and they have two labs, meaning you get your dentures in days instead of weeks. Call Comfort Fit Dentures today to schedule a free exam and x ray. 928 888 0002. 928 888 0002. All right, 348 to go. And. Uh, we have a scoring update from the Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge Sholo game. Hit us. Blue Ridge is up 23-0. to zero. I believe that one is in the fourth quarter as well. 23-0. to zero. Yeah. Well, I mean, hats off to the Cougars yeah. for making that thing close. Yeah, it is their homecoming night, so. This Northland Pioneer College kickoff, and it's time to kick off your college education. Do so at Northland Pioneer College. You'll pay the lowest tuition in the state. Raven going to get this one near the near hash. Now is allowing everything to set up, but gets gonna dumped at the 30. So the Lobos now trailing 17 with 3.42 to go. It's going to be a home run o'clock as far as what time it is. Oh, excuse me. It's 30 to 0. Blue Ridge is on top. And Brown Valley, at last we saw, was leading, I believe, 38 to 7. Yeah, or 3 or something like that. So the uh, big one that we'll have for you next week for all the marbles in the 3A East. Round Valley's got to have it. Is here the Lobos. Got to have something and fast. 
Is this one thrown to Baum as he is stopped and then we call that a what is that a, a, what's, a what's the wrestling move there? Suplex, suplex? yeah. Or? And uh, it's funny because the moms the moms want a penalty on that, but that's that's a tackle. It's not there's no penalty there. It's not the quarter. It's not on the quarterback. So did gain six yards on that play, but the clock moving now third or three fifteen to go. Seeing if there's any other scores that we need to let you know of. Uh, push, uh, draw this one up as it's given to Turley. Now bounces it out to the near side. One man to beat as he stays on his feet at the 50 and is eventually brought down at the 41. Gain of 24 and a comfort pit dentures first down. Well, that's just a great individual effort by Turley. Again, his receiver stopped blocking for him. And uh, otherwise, who knows what Turley could have made of that one. So great job by that young man, not giving up. 2.53 to go with the clock stopped. Now the ball's set. Lolo still trail 17. As they will again go Turley. Tries to serpentine through the center of the defense. Blows over the 40 and then falls forward to the 39 to gain four. They're going to have to stop the clock for a little injury. You've got somebody in the backfield. I think, is that Menard in the backfield? I could be wrong, but. Well, here's an interesting one for those of you who uh, live down here and perhaps have children attending the school, but Queen Creek is leading Red Mountain 28 to 14. Wow. Yeah. That uh, did not move the needle like I thought it might. <laughs> uh, Post and Butte leading Apache Junction 63-21. Both of these teams. Anxious for Post and Butte to get uh, as many wins as possible to help the computer. Yeah. Uh, that's especially important for and, Snowflake. And Round Valley. That helps Round Valley yeah. a little bit, too. Even though they came out on the wrong end of that yeah. one. Round Valley leading Fountain Hills 51-7. to Northwest Christian leading St. Mary's 35-7. to Marcos Deniza 20-14 to over Lake Havasu in okay. the fourth quarter. That's another one that both of these teams are really anxious about. Yeah. Man, how about Pima? 67 nothing. But Boy, that's a that's yeah. a bit of a dynasty happening over there, Pima. Morenci leading Sabino 14 nothing. Oh, that's interesting. That could hurt Sabino a little bit, and it might hurt Thatcher a little bit as well. Bradshaw Mountain leading Prescott 21 13 in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they got the. It was Menard who was injured, but he's walked. He walked off under his own power. So, Micah Mountain after it lost to CDO, leading Saguaro 34 to seven. So back at this one, second and seven, 2:44 to go, 27 to 10, Snowflake trailing, but with the football, having to do something and fast. As here's Bryant from the gun. Turns and gives to Turley, forced to run laterally for a degree, and then Williams brings him down right around the 35. You know, uh, interesting that they're running the ball now, um, but Turley has had pretty good success, and it looks like they're taking Bryant out of the game as well. Oh, Claridge is in at quarterback. 48-6, to six, one more score. Mojave with a big win is now... Trying to unload, Claridge oh. moving to the left and has that one yeah. dislodged. Falling on that one, a couple of players fighting for it. Eastmark indicating that it has it. And this would be the end of the ball game if it does, they do. Firebirds recover the fumble. Two minutes to go and uh, this should be, I don't think they can take three knees yet. Um, Two minutes and one second left, but. It's gonna be, it'll all depend on the they, they could exactly take three knees, uh, but that's going to just take, it's just going to depend on how the officials decide to spot it and if Snowflake decides to call a timeout. But that's just a little educational deal for the young man that just can't hold on to the ball that long. So the Lobos will be back down the mountain for Apache Junction next week. East Mark with Marcos Deniza. With both, with, which both of these teams should win those matchups. Yeah. I guess the, the question is, can the Lobos in particular get enough help from those that they have beaten 
as their samples runs that one toward midfield. As they're, they're in all likelihood going to finish 7-3. and three. That uh, If you finish winning 70% of your games and wind up on the wrong end of the rankings, that uh, would make for a really tough winner. So Snowflake is going to call a timeout, so that means Eastmark will not be taking a knee. Eastmark with Marcos Deniza and then Apache Junction. And so, so what are the two games Snowflake has left? Snowflake has Apache Junction and then um, Sierra Linda, which oh, should, that's right. should be two wins there. Yeah, so their playoffs start a week after the 3A. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can give you one other score. Thatcher was leading Push Ridge, which if the season had ended, that, that was going to be Blue Ridge's first-round opponent. Push Ridge, yeah. Thatcher has uh, has has come alive a little bit. They lost a lot of players from last year's team, uh, but they have they have come alive here in the second half of the season. And they actually jumped over Blue Ridge ranking wise. Yeah, I think Thatcher comes in at six, and Blue Ridge is seven right now. Okay, second down and six. Snowflake with two more timeouts. A minute and fifty-two seconds left. Moving over to the left side, Samples going to run it to the right side. Lerma tracks him down from behind. Samples with quite a day, 145 yards on 23 carries. Eastmark with, again, a quarterback that completes 71% of his passes, 145 yards on the uh, per game, rushes for 200 yards and uh, really used the ground game to – Really take the air out of the snowflake. How many, how many passing attempts did they have? Ten. These mark yeah, just ten tonight. That's what I thought. Yeah, they started the game throwing, and then they just they figured out, hey, the run works out pretty well. So snowflake might get the ball back, but opted to not use a timeout there. Sixty-five seconds left as the handoff goes. Samples tries the right side, bounces off one tackler, stay on his feet as he gets to midfield. Now a flag comes out. This might be a face match. Oh gosh. That would be insult to injury. Thrown right at the scrum. Yep. And let's take a look. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face, Face mask. Yep. So now, <laughs> so now I would imagine Eastmark will take a knee. Now, this uh, final score does not indicate how close this ball game was. Yeah. I two think. two plays, one, a, well, two pick sixes, and then the, the busted play. There's uh, 20 points Yeah, right there. No Snowflake. Physically, Snowflake, you know, was a little outman, but not tremendously. And I think that should be something that they should look at as a positive out of this game. And that'll do it. Takes a knee, Jensen. Going to celebrate essentially clinching the region as the Firebirds run their record to six and two. The Lobos fall to five and three. Got two winnable ball games for each to complete the season. And the question for the Lobos is just whether or not they're going to be able to do enough. I, I can't believe that this loss would drop them that many spots. I mean, you figure Marcos Deniza lost to a, a snowflake, a, a, a higher ranked and a lower ranked team, and they only fell four spots. Yeah. Snowflake just lost to a higher ranked team. I'm, I mean, they might drop two, um, and I think that's the same still computers be in there. though that has CDO <laughs> number three in the open. So yeah, we, yeah. Unfortunately, they can't speak to us. <laughs> we'll start wrapping it up after this. The final score, 27 to 10. It's Shola Ford's presentation of high school football on italk1067.com. You think glass, think Deemer's Glass in Lakeside. Deemer's Glass offers the best selection of quality glass with affordable prices. They do full home window packages, replacement windows, custom shower doors and enclosures, custom mirrors in many shapes, styles, and colors, glass doors and hardware, commercial glass for buildings and offices, skylights, screens, fire rated glass for your fireplace or stove, window film, and more. Visit Deemer's Glass today on Porter Mountain Road in Lakeside or call 1-888-GLASSMAN. Who sells the number one truck in America? Sholo Ford. 
That's right. Not only do they sell it, Sholo Ford is the best place to buy it. Why? Guy Hatch guarantees it. In fact, he guarantees you'll get the best deal on your next Ford car, van, or SUV as well. It doesn't matter what you buy. Sholo Ford has the best deal. Sholo Ford on the east end of the Deuce and at SholoFord.com. Want to go fishing? Head to Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. They have fishing supplies, outdoor fishing attire, and fishing gear. Plus, all kinds of bait, including live worms, flies, and lures. The staff are experienced anglers, and they can advise you on what you need, where to go, and what type of bait the fish are biting on. Plus, pick up your fishing, camping, and boat permits. When you think fishing, think Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. Located on Highway 260, one mile before the casino. It's a tough game out there. We can help you reach your goals and come out victorious. Need help paying for college? Let the financial aid experts at Northland Pioneer College help you qualify for federal, institutional, or tribal grants. See our website at npc.edu for details. Northland Pioneer College. Expanding minds, transforming lives. I wore that because I was coming down here. <laughs> Final score, 27 to 10. Lobos now five and three. But as you were saying, as we were going into the break, Mike, the, uh, the, the Padres had been treated relatively kindly by the ones and zeros. So you, you suspect that the, the 13th ranked Lobos might wind up similarly? I, I, I got to believe. I mean, if you have, a t you have a team ranked 10, 14, and, and 17 in your region, that's that says a lot about your region, I think. And now Marcus Denise winning tonight would help would help that. Um, so that'd be nice. Uh, I, I think that they're gonna. I think Snowflake isn't gonna move up, but they're certainly not gonna fall too far. And I think they're gonna definitely get two wins in their final two weeks. And so I think they should be able to to get into the playoffs. We'll continue our conversation here after the Lobos fall 27 to 10 with the Beeler Orthodontics straight line play of the game. Beeler Orthodontics, lift a smile, love your smile. What you got? Well, you know, we talked. There was quite a few big plays. Obviously, uh, a couple of pick sixes for Eastmark against Snowflake. Um, you know, but Snowflake had some great plays as well. But really, the the the, the play that really kind of changed the complexion of the game was the first pick six by uh, I believe Blake. that was Blake. Um, deep in snowflake territory and ran that back into the end zone and really put the Lobos on their heels and it took them out took them the rest of the half and halftime to really recover from that and by then it was almost too late and so that kind of set the tone for the rest of the game so that's our be the orthodox straight line play of the game and really quick the, the Lobos who just come off running for about 10 yards a carry against Marcos Denisa so you got to send a lot of credit not just to Blake for those two interceptions you also uh, got Hinton, who is playing uh, an awful lot, Menard and Williams, yeah. setting the edges and playing linebacker spots that really denied a lot of those big holes for the Lobos to navigate through. Yeah, those those guys, those linebackers, those three guys that you just mentioned really were the, the focal point and the pivot point of this game because Snowflake didn't have an answer for those guys on uh, both offense or defense. Okay, the Deemer's Glass, glass shattering hit of the game. If you need glass for your home or business, Deemer's Glass in Lakeside is hands down the best place to call when you need a quality glass at affordable price. Call 1-88-GLASSMAN. Well, he quietly had a very good game, uh, had a couple big receptions, uh, but defensively just did a great job, and probably one of the biggest hits of the game was Papa on, I don't remember who the receiver was. Uh, Cano. Cano. Um, dislodged that it was a big it was going to be a big play for Eastmark about a 30 40 yard pass down the field and Papa delivered a shot perfectly timed perfectly timed with the shoulder pad and uh, separated the ball from the would be receiver so I think that's our uh, hit of the game so one more here for the Horn Auto Center drive of the game I know this didn't result in points for Eastmark but had a drive that started at the five used an encroachment flag to move it out to the 10, and then wound up going into the red zone where it was eventually picked off, I believe, by Papa. But the Lobos were then in the shadows of their own goal posts, and that was when you're going to get Blake with the uh, interception. So though the, the drive of the game didn't result in points, that was kind of the drive that was going that, to really change the complexion of everything. It, it really did. you know. And you could also uh, talk about the, uh, the drive that Snowflake came out in the, first, the, the second half with. Uh, because that was really a big, a big um, positive for the, for the Snowflake Lobos tonight. 
Uh, but I but I agree that that sequence of drives right there was was really the the game. All right, special thanks to all of our sponsors, including Ace Hardware for the keys to the game, Northland Pioneer College for the kickoffs. Uh, got the Comfort Fit Dentures first downs, Mountain Mobile Auto Glass touchdowns, Horn Auto Center for that just described drive of the game, Beal Orthodontics for the play of the game, Deemer's Glass for the big hit, and Honda Ski and Outdoor Sports Store for sponsoring our Halftime show that was spent trying to figure out a problem, but still, <laughs> we're thankful to all of our sponsors. Thank you for joining us and starting your weekend with us. Thanks. On behalf of Scotty as the director, Lizzie, Robin, Ethan, Mike, and Mike, I'm Derek, and we'll be with you for the big 3A East Championship next week, Round Valley at Blue Ridge. Until then, be safe. This has been Sholo Ford's presentation of high school football on iTalk 1067 KNKI Pine Talk and iTalk The White Mountains, Beamer's Glass, Wheeler Orthodontics, Mountain Mobile Auto Glass and Tin, Comfort Fit Ventures, Summit Regional Medical Center, Horn Auto Center, and Honda Ski and Outdoor Sport. This broadcast has been a copyrighted production of ITOC 1067 and Country Mountain Airways, a clip from the communication station. In the Broadcast, retransmission, or use of this broadcast without the expressed written consent of ITOC 1067 or Country Mountain Airwaves is strictly prohibited. For more information on this game and other games around the region, go to ITOC1067.com.